Welcome everybody to The Secret Comics Presents Indiegogo. This book is written by me, Nasser Rabadi, and drawn by the fantastic Jason Robinson. Our book contains four horror stories, Charlie Finds a Friend, There's Nothing to Be Scared Of, Don't Open the Box, and A Knife in Darkness. For this relaunch, we've also extended our comic book from 20 pages to 22 pages, with the potential to add some behind-the-scenes extras if we hit our stretch goals. Order today and discover what terrors are lurking within. Hello everybody, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design. Uh, welcome to my channel. This is a live stream, drawing live stream, where I'm continuing to uh, work on Secret Comics Presents, the uh, horror anthology comic that you just saw a commercial for. Um, we are in the ending stages of me drawing the book. I'm working on the final pages right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just live streaming all this stuff for you guys so you can see what I'm doing how the book is progressing, and uh, you know, to let you all know that the book will be arriving on time as scheduled in October of 2021, as promised. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, right now, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing, because as usual, I'm rushed, but <laughs> I'm trying to get it, get it all finished. Hold on one second. Let me zoom out so you guys can see some more stuff um zoom out a little there that's a little better let me try to sharpen this a little fix the focus that's a little better uh this is uh what page is this this is this page 20 of the book so uh i'm currently in the stage of transferring the rough layouts i did on computer onto the actual bristol board light boxing it and then trying to make that look tight enough where I can get to a point where I can start inking it. So uh, I'm going to be working on page 20 and then page 19 today. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, give this live stream a thumbs up. And uh, if you would, please uh, hit the bell down below for notifications of future videos. Um, see, probably next time I'm going to live stream is... I'm guessing on Monday. Right now, I am using the very last 10 minutes of my free StreamYards account. Uh, if you're not aware, StreamYard is this uh, sort of uh, online program that I'm using to live stream. And uh, you can get uh, 20 free hours 
of uh, live streaming through StreamYard. But I used it all off this past week by StreamYarding, by uh, live streaming twice a day um, for two hours uh, since last Monday. So I've used it all up, a month's worth in only a week. And uh, so I only have 10 minutes left. But the cool thing is that if you have only a few minutes left, as long as you keep live streaming, it's this, the account still goes. So it won't end after 10 minutes. This live stream will continue to go on until I choose to end it. And then at that point, then I have to, uh, then I would have to upgrade. But until that point, I'm just going to keep on live streaming <laughs> probably for the next two hours. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, let's see. I'm supposed to be doing something else here. Mm. Oh, yeah. Turn my tablet on. That would help so I could see who's here and uh, what exactly is going on. Oh, we might have a special guest today. So if you... Uh, if you would, please share out the stream to uh, to all your friends and family, your enemies, um, you know, your you want to be stalkers, whoever. Send it out to uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook. Let everybody know that I'm live streaming, and I just might have a special guest show up. Um, we'll find out. Um, they're 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 very busy, so whether they have time to you know, poke their head in and say hi. Um, remains to be see, seen, but uh, hopefully they will. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to back the book, Secret Comics Presents. Um, the link is in the description below, and also I will, boom, I just, uh, you can see it scrolling across the bottom of your screen right now. It's www.secret-comics.com. You can go there, and uh, I will also post it in the chat for everybody to see. So if you would, back the book. Um, there's still a few weeks left before we close the campaign for good um, because after that, we'll be sending it to the printer and you will no longer be able to buy it. So don't wait. You can get uh, original art like uh, like this page I'm currently drawing. You can get original pages from the book, art pages. So you can buy uh, digital copies of the book for as little as $8, physical copies of the book for as little as $10, and so on and so forth on up. And uh, you know there is a there is there are different tiers, different um, things offered in the campaign for every budget. So please take a look at the campaign. Click the link below um, in the description, or go to www.secret-comics.com. I'm speaking way too fast, but let's see. My tablet is coming on, which is good. Um, let's see. Will that work? That that's good enough. Okay, got that going. Uh, let me go over to my computer. I know I'm supposed to be. Oh yeah, I forgot. Hey, Mark Anthony's here. How you doing? Mark Anthony says hashtag Kick Nosser. Yes, Kick Nosser. Um, are we all trying to figure out what we're doing? Yes, me especially. So. Uh, let me just put this in the chat so you guys will be able to access it readily. Um, let's see. Okay, I think that's good enough. Should be. Let's say copy, paste, and I, there we go. I think that'll work. Hmm. Okay, let me blow this up. Bold, save. All right. Okay, that's good. All right. So Mark Anthony is still here. There's one person watching. So, okay, doke. Um, <laughs> wait for my tablet to get up and running. I'm gonna put on some music and then uh, start start drawing again. Try to get this page tightened up. And we'll be live streaming probably until 
11, 11 o'clock, so two hours. So, ooh, Cross Comics is here too. Hey, Cross Comics, how you doing, Rick Piper? Good seeing you. Um, Mark Anthony says, also go to Jason's website and buy a piece of art or two. Yes, yes, you can go to my website. The link, again, is down below in the description. And, uh, yeah, there is a there's an art section where you can buy my art, original pieces of art that I've, draw, that I've drawn. And, uh, yeah, you can go there too. Mark Anthony says, I retweeted you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Mark Anthony. Cross Comics says, I am good. I'm glad to hear them, um, Rick. It's always good. It's always a good day when Rick Piper is good. Because when Rick Piper is bad, you don't want to be you don't want to be in his way. It'd be, it'd be a bad day for you. <laughs> a bad day for Rick Piper is a bad day for everyone around him. So don't mess with Rick Piper. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got my pencil, which I need to draw. I got my music, which I need to listen to. And uh, my tablet is pretty good. Um, Rick Piper says, uh, I would. Can't afford to buy anything. Oh, that's fine. If you if you only just share out the link to the campaign, Rick, that is enough. That, that That's free. doesn't cost a penny. Share the link out to this live stream. Share the link out to the campaign. And uh, that would be more than enough. Thank you very much. Okay, let me start drawing. See if I can get this page looking somewhat decent. As you can tell, this is a happy page. See, he's smiling, he's very happy. Oh, I saw Black Widow, by the way. Um, started watching it last night and then finished it today. And watched it with my, my wife. It was good. Um, I mean, there are there are some things <laughs> there's some <laughs> some things that stood out that um, I would nitpick about. I don't know if I would I would say nitpick. Maybe it's a little more than nitpick, but overall, it was a good movie. It was it was as good as I hoped it would be. Let's put it that way. It, w it definitely was not Captain Marvel. <laughs> if you've seen Captain Marvel, okay, this this was not Captain Marvel. It was far. It was, a, it was an actually it was actually a good movie. Um, Cross Comics says, I'm, I'm saving up to pay for a Canadian Shield number two and a Snowdrift number one to be drawn. Okay, cool. There's more, yeah, you know, save your money to get your stuff done, Rick. You know, back, backing other people's books comes uh, comes behind um, funding, you know, getting, getting your own stuff funded, so... Let's see. Um, Mark Anthony says you've got Spock and Bones on your website, but no James T. Kirk, USS Enterprise. Well, I wanted to see how the Bones and Spock pictures sold before I brought out the James T. Kirk. I have Kirk, actually, um, but um, you know, if the others if, if the others sell, I'll replace them with uh, James T. Kirk. But I already have I have James T. Kirk all drawn. Actually, I have, I have two versions. I have and I think they're on the same sheet. Um, it's a, uh, it's James C. Kirk, young and then older. So, okay. 
Hey, three people are watching. Thank you very much, everybody. If you haven't already, please make sure to give the live stream a thumbs up and make sure to share out the stream to Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all the other cool social media that the kids are using nowadays, that the young whippersnappers are using, their TikToks and their, although TikTok is, uh, is, isn't that, isn't that communist? So, I don't know. So yeah, send it off to them too. He's got the bones of his artwork on his site, says uh, Cross Comics. Mark Anthony says, need the set. Hey, man. Then, uh, yeah, start off with uh, Bones and uh, and Spock. And I will post um, Kirk on the website for you to buy as well. So you can have all of them. Mark Anthony says, oh, fine. Hey, Jeff Potts, how you doing? Good seeing you. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. I'm feeling much better than I was last night. I was uh, I was kind of worn out last night, so I had to I had to cut the live stream short. Of course, I wanted. Of course, I'm probably gonna jinx myself. I'm gonna start feeling bad now. <laughs> See, sorry, started. Actually, I just ate. So that's some of that's some of the rice not going down the right pipe. Cross Comics says, should I do an auction again soon on my channel? Yeah, why not? Uh, Cross Comics says, does a person behind her want to ask her something? Yes, I think he's asking her not to turn around. He's like, uh, if you if you don't mind, keep just just hold that pose. Hold that pose, please. Thank you. He's like, smile. <laughs> hey, oh my gosh, Matt Constant is here. And he says, I'm in the green room, Jason. Oh, man. So Matt Constant is here, and uh, he will he will be joining me for this live stream. He's been gracious enough to uh, agree to uh, spend a few minutes uh, on my drawing channel so that you don't, guys don't have to suffer just listening to me the whole time. So if you would, please share out this information to social media. Let people know that Matt Constant, a far better artist than me, is here to grace us with his presence and show us all how to draw properly. Hopefully he won't, he won't criticize my work too much. Hold on. <laughs> hey, Matt, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How's it going, Hold Jason? On. Okay, go ahead. You hear me? Yeah, you you're, you're a little faint. But, it's a little um, faint? Yeah. I know, I remember I had this type of problem uh, earlier. I remember when I was doing, like, drawing quarters. I don't know what it was. I can't remember the... Hmm. I don't know there what the uh, That's better. solution was, but so how you doing? I'm doing good. Doing well, thanks. Um, mm -hmm. Working on trying to get these pages now for Nasser because he's he's really mean and uh, you know he's been threatening me. So <laughs> I want yeah. I want to keep the use of my two hands because I, I'm, that's that's the only skill I have. So I don't I don't want him like you know breaking my hands or my fingers or anything. So I have to get the work done. So, cross, cross comics says it cures you good. So, <laughs> good, good. Hey, cross comics, how's it going? <laughs> Mark Anthony's here too. Wow. Hey, Mark. Yeah. What? Mark? Wait, hold on. Mark Anthony said that 
I think he said that he just bought some of my artwork from my website. Oh, oh dang. True. Thank you, Anthony. Awesome. Nice. I will I will be sure to, to uh to post those uh post those uh Kirk drawings for you to 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 look at as well. Um Captain Kirk. Say again? Captain Kirk. Yeah, Captain Kirk. Yeah, because oh, on, wow. on my website I have uh, original art that I've drawn that um that I've been uh, selling. Yeah. And so I had pictures of McCoy and uh, Spock that I had, I had drawn, and uh, and Mark Anthony asked about Captain Kirk because I didn't have him on there. I said, "Well, I have drawings of Kirk that, you know, I I've done, but I didn't put, post them on the website because I was waiting until the Spock and McCoy pictures had uh, had sold." And he said, "Okay, fine." So he, so apparently he bought them. Wow, nice. Which is awesome. Thank you very much. He wants that Captain Kirk. Uh, blame him. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. Let me just. Okay, that's probably better. Um, but yeah. Um, Matt, if you don't you guys don't know, is currently working on a book called Modded. It is. Uh, it's not. It's not up for sale yet. But he's currently working on it. He's going to uh, start the campaign at some point in the future. Um, but you know, he live streams himself drawing the book every Monday. Um, on his channel every Monday afternoon. Um, and, um, I guess yeah. Yeah, we'll find out in the future when, you know, yeah, when sorry it'll... for, uh, <laughs> not having the exact date yet, but, um, but yeah, I've, I've been, uh, man, I've been, it's been keeping my live stream, uh, regular. That's been a, uh, first, I think for me, usually I'm doing it once a month. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, same with me. It's like, I'm, 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 I'm glad you're doing it because, because I love watching you draw and I love watching you working on the book. And I love being able to steal ideas from you to use on my book, <laughs> which is the best. I take notes while you're drawing. It's like, oh, cool, that looks good. I'll use that. Hey, that's and what it, I do. Yeah. I, 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 if I find something, I'm like, hey, I think that's what artists do, man. They we inspire <laughs> each other, you know? And then yeah. We, we utilize that uh, inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> that's how you. That's what a good artist do, though. You know? Yeah, exactly. That's what the smart artists, the, 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 the yeah. real artists do that. Yeah, when you find out like your favorite artist and you think this guy's crazy good, mm -hmm. he, you listen to him. He's like, yeah, man, I study all these other artists and like like Dave Williams. He he said he's just like a sponge. He soaks up, you know. Like who? Dave Williams. Uh, Dave Williams. He, what he, does uh, he? What, what do you work on? He did the um. No, my that happened in Wolverine. Right um, he did the. Uh, he does that comic for Allegiance that um the sheriff. The, uh, the the yeah. black sheriff western comic. oh oh david oh, oh brohawk oh yeah, brohawk, yeah 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 um he does um oh my god bass bass reeves bass reeves yeah that's it yeah so yeah i love his art great great artist yeah yeah and he's like he said he soaks in like all the other artist stuff and takes it in and he's an amazing mm -hmm. artist man yeah and yeah, so he's, uh, he's doing that <laughs> i'm that's surprised a, he, d he doesn't have his own youtube channel because you know the, t the few times i've seen him on um uh, Aaron Lepresti's channel. I mean, he's he's so entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh man, yeah. And he and you know and he obviously he obviously knows a lot about comics and 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 art and stuff. And, and you know if you know I, I would definitely subscribe to his channel, guys. If you haven't already, you should go subscribe to Matt Cosson on YouTube. Um, oh, I think his name is in the chat in the chat, but it's it's just Matt Cosson. M A T T C O S S I N, one word. And um, look him up on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel because the guy doesn't have nearly enough subs. He, I mean, he he deserves far more subs than, than he has. So go over there, yeah. sub to his channel, and then uh, then come back here. <laughs> I don't know if I deserve, but I'm I'm trying to work towards it. <laughs> no, 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 seriously, because I mean, it, also he he he's a regular on Drawn and Quartered every Wednesday on Mike uh, Mike Miller's channel. Where, which is a uh, two-hour competition between comic book artists where they draw the same subject uh, in, in two hours, and then the, the viewers get to judge who the winner is, the best artist. Yeah. And, and you've been that. on more than a few times? Huh? I said you've been on more than a few times. Yeah, but I'm very slow, so I never win. But you, <laughs> you, you usually you win quite, quite a fair amount, or you come in second place. Yeah, I you're, usually... You're, you're, it, huh? I'll usually uh, tie with Siege lately. <laughs> yeah, see, Siege kind of cheats because she she she's she, she's a girl. She gets the uh, 
<laughs> she's got the uh, sparkling personality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, personality. People, people love and Siege because because she gives Mike, you know, crap all the time. She gives him the most grief out of everybody, right? Yeah. She's like, <laughs> she's like a fan fave. She's also yeah. a great artist too. But she is. Yeah, she it, is. It doesn't hurt that she's got the. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a great thing going with her and Mike. You know, that back and um, forth, it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like the thing in Johnny Storm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, 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 or Mike, Mike is is grumpy Ben Grimm, and then uh, Siege comes in like you know pulling pranks and teasing him all the time. We get to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, but man. no, yeah, it's it's a fun time, man. At the uh, and the chat, like in the chats, like like the funniest. They make some of the funniest comments out of. Them. Everybody, <laughs> you read the chat, man. I, yeah. I start trying to read the chat more because you know you're drawing, so you're not like you're focused on. But I start right. trying to look, keep the chat window open, so I can look up and see what they're saying because it's some funny stuff, man, being said. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it Jeff does. Potts, Matt, who? <laughs> How's it going, Mr. Potts? <laughs> Who's Mike Miller, and why should I care? <laughs> <laughs> when Mike confirmed. Poor Mike. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Anthony loves loves that. Let's give Mike a hard time too, huh? Uh, I think everyone gives Mike a hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike, Mike is like a man. He he's he's, he's so good. Um, yeah. He he is. I mean, as yeah. an artist. I, I, did you see I, his pit that he did? The pit. Yes, I did. No, I pit. saw it. No, it's yeah, fantastic. Was like, oh man. It's like hap. Nine times out of ten, whenever he does stuff, and that's kind of the funny thing too. It's like a lot of times his work is 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 the best on, on the stream, and then he ends up coming in like last place. Yeah, I'm just like, oh it's my gosh. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like Roddy Roddy Dangerfield's like no respect. Uh, it's so funny, yeah. Or or Aaron, La- house. <laughs> or Aaron Lopresti will come, show up drawing a completely different character than he's supposed to, and then he'll still beat Mike. Yeah, he's like, what are we drawing today, Pitt? He's like, okay, I'll draw the thing. And you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Mike got one vote. Aaron got 10. <laughs> Aaron actually, did Aaron win this last Yeah, he time? did. He because actually he, drew the he actual actually drew Pitt. character. He, yeah, he drew, and it was Pitt fantastic. Sweet. Yeah, I've never seen Pitt uh, barefoot before, and it looked solid. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. That looked good to get the claws coming out of the toes even. Yeah. I, I mean, Aaron, oh, my gosh. I, I love Aaron's channel because he is such – a phenomenal artist. I mean, and and like Mike, he's so fast. Yeah, he's, no, he's crazy fast. That you have to be when you're working for the big two, because those artists, like well, at least the old school guys, man, they uh-huh. they uh, man, they can crank it out because you know, right? Like he said, when he did when he does the drawing quarter, and this is my mindset. I have to try to get in when I do the drawing quarter. You only have two hours. He thinks of it as fast, rough, just crank it out. Right. Like you would a, con- a convention sketch. In my mind, I'm like right. still in the phase of I'm trying to draw a cover, you know? Right. And yeah. I'm trying to do this giant like composition. I'm like, what am I doing? And then for me, I guess it's because if I don't feel the drawing, I don't feel excited about it, then I just, yeah. it's not going to turn out the way I want. So I got to, I take too much time mm-hmm. to try to come up with some type of layout. But I yeah. just got to focus on drawing the character and that's it. Do like a convention sketch. I got to get that through my head. But, yeah. I'm, I'm more in your sort of, um, your, on your side, because because whenever I I have to draw something for drawn and quartered, I'm always thinking it's like what's going to be a cool layout, what's going to look yeah. what will look good as a cover or as, or as a poster, it, because if I just drew the character, at least for me, it would be boring. It wouldn't look like yeah. Aaron Rusty just drawing the character because when he draws a character, even if he's just drawing it for whatever, just standing there, it looks dynamic. Just standing still and it looks awesome. Yeah, <laughs> right. With me, it's like I have to put effort into it, otherwise it'll just It'll look lame. That's, that's how I feel. I feel like I have to really put. Um, I mm-hmm. got to win people over by making it look appealing. The design, overall design. Right. Sometimes I succeed. Sometimes I don't. But I mm-hmm. actually have fun every time I'm doing it, and I feel like I'm getting better. And also, a lot of times I'll sell the piece after. I, even if I don't finish that night, I'll sell it to somebody online. Will contact me and say, "Can I buy that?" And I'm like, "Sure." Cool. And then that's, I'll, that's I'll awesome. do it on the auction too. Yeah, that's fantastic. So it's a win-win. Even yeah. If I win-win. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell people about modded in case they don't know yeah yeah uh, modded is you see him holding the gun here but it's actually a nerf gun it's it's a bunch of nerf modders 
who uh, I guess the term for people who take Nerf guns and they like modify them, like use like three D print out add ons and stuff like that, and they three D print like longer barrels or you know different types of uh, features that make them maybe shoot the foam darts further. But but these guys, the main character is this guy right here. His name is Lom, and he is a Nerf modder. He's like one of the best in the world. And what happens is the world gets invaded by aliens. So these aliens take over, but they have a champion who's like one of their mightiest warriors, athletes, and they challenge the world, the Earth's mightiest athlete or warriors to any competition. And if they can beat the alien champion, they will leave the planet. So uh, they get like a thousand tries, basically a thousand. So all these countries are all trying to, you know, get their best athletes together, China, Europe, and mm -hmm. America, of course. And then they're losing every single one. So mm. these guys, Lam comes on, is like, if we challenge them to a nerf competition, we could beat this alien, mm -hmm. right? So we're the yeah. best. So so these guys, ragtag group, he gets some other modders together. They're crazy. They want to go on a blaze of glory. Because if you lose the competition, whatever it is, it could be, you know, Sudoku. Uh, you, if you lose that competition, you get fried by lightning. You get so, killed? They get killed, electrocute you, and you die. So Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So I have a question. If, yeah. like, so like, if an old lady challenged him to a, to, a, to a crocheting contest and she lost, they would kill her right there? Oh, yeah. Actually, there's a panel in the comic where she's he's playing, uh, I think, solitaire or something with an old lady. Oh, dang. At a, t at a coffee table, and she doesn't make it. <laughs> but you don't, you don't show <laughs> oh, it. You don't show it, but we just know that she didn't win. Oh no! There's, there's even a guy who who uh, tries to beat the champion in a sailboat competition. He doesn't win either. So, oh, um, they basketball, uh, hockey, mm -hmm. everything they try, and they just can't do it. This guy, this alien, is too good. So, our little ragtag group uh, wanted to join, but in this page right now, I'm doing his dad, who is also a Nerf modder. They call him like a blacksmith because he creates the best Nerf mods. Yeah. He actually doesn't want his son to compete because he doesn't want him to die. He said, we won't uh, participate in their games. We, we're going to die with dignity. We're not going to play their games and get right. killed. So, But the son's like, no, I'm going out, man. I'm going out either in a lightning flash or going to be a hero. And this is this hero pose. Uh, but <laughs> but the dad's trying to take him out. He basically he punches his friend out. Right. And he, uh, he tries to drug him, actually. Like, yeah. Give him a little bit of a um, relaxant. <laughs> And uh, smashes his Nerf gun, and his yeah. friend's trying to stop him here. But he ends up actually joining him, obviously. Cool. And he wants to make the best guns for him. So it's going to be fun. It's like it's that weird story. It's written by Narwhal and um, oh. uh, back to the drawing board and a Tungsten who's funding the project. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Narwhal's actually coloring it. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. So I'm excited. Yeah, he's already colored some pages. I don't know if he's putting any up mm -hmm. samples or but um. Is your brother yeah. working on it with you? Uh, no, he's not working on this one right now. But we're actually working on a uh, we're working on a new book uh, of our own that my brother wrote. And, oh, um, wow. So I'm just kind of like right now going through some designs uh -huh. and um, kind of going to start some layouts for it. Okay. So we're kind of we're brainstorming. So we're getting excited. Now, we want to launch Indiegogo. Now, who is your brother? Because I I, I know I know you have one who who works in comics, but I don't know. A lot about him is he older younger are you twins what's going on no, he's are, my are you younger Siamese brother. twins are you signing yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like zaymont to max you know you can feel, <laughs> he i feel it <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's he's uh, my younger brother and this cool thing he's an artist and a writer as well he creates his own cool. comics but we work together and we work uh -huh. together a lot professionally too and he colored a lot of my work like when i work with other publishers mm. And um, which comes in handy because I'm so picky on people coloring my stuff when I, right. when I first started. And he's cheaper. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not you buy that some pizza, like, and you're good. Cheaper. You yeah, he wants pizza. he wants money though. He's like, oh, hey, really? can you help me on this deadline. He's like, how much are you paying me? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, I treat him good, and uh, I help him out. He helps me out, so that's good. Yeah, it's nice having an in-house artist. So yeah. And, uh, that's why Mike has yeah, so many kids. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You need to train those kids and have like an assembly line going. I'm right? serious. You yeah. know, if, if if they're related, it's not really a sweatshop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> chores. It's, you consider it part of chores. They're chores. Exactly. There you go. They're chores. They even call it inking chores, right? That's like a <laughs> to them. 
but no, yeah, yeah, it's it's good having people that, that you can have in your home. That's why you got to reproduce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And you just got married, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I got Congratulations it. and get on it. Oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I I was talking that uh, tungsten was like, so uh, when are you gonna have kids? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I go, well, it's gonna be a while because we we kind of agreed to hold off until you know we wait a little while mm-hmm. before we have kids and uh, get to know like get to know how it is living uh, together and yeah yeah. Well, it's too late now. You're stuck, so. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's like you got to learn each other's like. Yeah, no, no. And, enjoy, enjoy each other's company for at least a year, and then yeah, uh, get used to it, and I get to, learn how we work together, and then we know how to work together when you have. Yeah, because you have to you have to learn how to team up against those kids once you have. Them. <laughs> so we spend this first year like training, you know, doing like like the vendors do. You know, you have training sessions, like yeah. you know, where you have sort of like fake kids, and you have to learn how to tackle them and pull them down. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we got a little practice work together. Going, so. Yeah, it's like when you have like diaper changing like table. Mm-hmm. I, I joke around with her. I'm like, don't worry. I said, you you can. I'll cheer you as you uh, change diapers and I cheer for you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, right. I, it's funny. It's like uh, I don't have a problem doing that kind of thing. I mean, I don't. I have a strong stomach. Yeah. So like like for instance, like uh, I'll tell a little secret. My my brother, we had a dog, and uh, every time we took her a walk, he could not pick up. You know, Are you serious? What? No, he. I thought he was just making it up to get out of it. And I go, no, man, you got to do it. It's your turn. And he's like, dry heaving. Like every time he's like trying to. Are you serious? Up. Yeah, and I'm like, you. I start, I'm like dying laughing. I'm like, you're joking, right? And he's like, <laughs> what? And what I'm do like, you? What do you think only a dog would 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 be like? He didn't think he even have to pick up their poop. No, he just is like he cannot stand that type of thing. He's like, uh, wow. and it's funny because I mean he's done uh, janitorial work, so. He's dealt with stuff. I think that's far worse than dog yeah. food to me is clean because it's just dog yeah, food. Yeah, it, it is. It's used dog food. And, you know, as long as that's all we feed her. We don't feed her tables craps. Uh, well, you know, well, she's gone now, but I mean, we would feed her, you know, good stuff. So, mm-hmm. but no, it's funny. I would crack up. So he's like, yeah, there's no way I'm changing baby's diapers. He's like, <laughs> that's it for me. Well, I, I, I heard that baby poop is kind of the worst but uh <laughs> yeah i heard the same thing i've actually seen it so for, for, fortunately whenever i've had to change my knees it has it, you know poop hasn't been involved so oh, that's good um yeah I, i've been spared it but i heard yeah, it's, it's, it's not very fun <laughs> no no I, I i take people's word for that i mean i i've, I've just heard some horror stories uh, that um i will i'll spare you guys because uh, my family's tendency to kind of get a little too uh yeah too descriptive because we're artists we're storytellers you know what i mean so we we paint pictures and then people are like get gross <laughs> <laughs> but no it's like i had friends who like had a kid and just to say like those um what do they call them the uh murphy mm-hmm. carts yeah right? yeah well he had a problem where it was literally coming out the back of his top of his shirt collar what? How, yeah and and uh, it was just like all over everything, the bag, oh, no. all over all the stuff in the car. Stop. So what they did was they just, it was two brothers, right? They just took the kid and left and left everything sit there. Oh, stop it! And I'm like, I'm like, you imagine working there and like going no. to grab a car and stuff, and you're like, oh. No. oh. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I used to work at Win Dixie in high school, um, and I, you know, I, I had to do the. I, I was a bag boy, but I also had to mop up and clean up stuff, and I, and I had to clean the bathrooms at the Winn Dixie. Oh yeah, man, that, that was the worst part of the job. I mean, it's just like even even now, it's like it's been thirty five years, and I'm still having having flashbacks. <laughs> ah, 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 waking up screaming. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. I I had a, I worked at um was it Fry's Electronics uh-huh. uh, for like a few years. And um, man, the, they uh, had us do everything. I was a cashier for like a year, mm-hmm. and they they had us do everything. I was like reupholstering chairs in the back, and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm a cashier. <laughs> I sit there like <laughs> reupholstering a chair. And I'm like, I got some sweatshop. I'm like, this is, what am I doing? And then and then the uh, the last straw that they said, okay, I did the trash. I did, I mean, all this stuff. And then they're like, okay, he walked me and a couple of guys to the um, bathroom. Yeah. And he's like, you guys need to deal with this. And it was just like overflow and i'm like Stop. i just looked at him i go i don't do bathrooms and i just walked out 
and oh, the other wow. two guys were younger than me, so they were stuck. Oh like man, like, you just left them hanging. I go, sorry, man, I don't do bad. <laughs> Dang. And just I expected you, them to have me go back, but you uh, just left your back. brother there to clean up that mess. That's cruel. Yeah. <laughs> your brother's uh, like, oh, Matt, wait, come back. It's like yeah. I don't do bathrooms. <laughs> if you gotta learn somehow. Oh this is no. It. This is where you learn. Mm-mm. No, but yeah, it's it was ex- an experience, man. At working at that type of place, um, wow. man, we had all oh, the first but month I worked there. We had uh, I knew the lady who was security head of security, uh-huh. and she's trying to apprehend somebody, and is another woman, and I could hear her kind of like scuffling, mm-hmm. and they were outside the door, kind of like I heard yelling and screaming, and then all of a sudden, I heard a guy's voice yell, "Let her go, let her go," and uh, all of a sudden, that my friend. I went. Uh-huh. I was walking over to actually see because if I could help, what's going on? Yeah. yeah. I see my friend. She's a little short, blind lady. She took off running full speed with this look of determination in her face, and she was followed by all these guys in suits and Fry's employees diving across tables and everything. I'm like, what? And they're he's got a gun. What? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, so I just started. I had a, a Chinese customer. I was helping this Chinese older lady uh-huh. behind my register, and I just started running backwards. I'm looking for the shooter at the gun, right? Uh-huh. So I'm looking, running back, and all of a sudden, one of the uh, this employees that work with me, cashier, this tall blonde girl, like grabbed my arm, latched onto my arm. She's like, "What do we do?" And I was like, "What do you mean, what do we do?" Oh, <laughs> I was no. like, oh, I, was, I, I was almost felt like, you know, what do, you mean, what do we do? <laughs> yeah. Well, of course, I I told her I got, uh, she's latched onto me. I can't run anywhere. So I go, okay, I go get over here. So we got behind this shelf, and I told oh. her to get underneath the shelf. She went to the bottom shelf, and. I told her like she. I thought she was calling the police. She's on her phone uh, calling her friend, telling her how crazy something stop crazy it. happening. And I go, what are you friend. doing? She's like, Jennifer, you won't believe what's happening. I'm like, call the police. What are you doing? <laughs> and everybody's like hiding. Everyone's running. I see top of heads running past the counter. It was crazy. But uh, long story short, um, I have just sat there for a while. You know, what? I got to see what's going on, man, because I don't know if there's uh-huh. a, there's alarms going and everything. Right. And I'm thinking if I look around the corner, my mind, you know that. In every movie, when you look around the corner, boom, that's when you get shot, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, God protect me, because I'm gonna look around the corner. I gotta see what's going on. I don't want to sit here and wait for somebody to come up to me. Right. Yeah. So, and uh, so I just like look around the corner. Finally, stand up, start walking out to the front. Everybody's just like laying on the ground, like hiding, covering their kids. Uh-huh. It was just me and this other kid from LA, and we're like, we're like just looking around. I go, I think he's gone. And oh. Then, uh, and then uh, we found out was there's the, they were trying to arrest the guy's girlfriend and he mm-hmm. um, he jumped out of the car with a shotgun, sawed off shotgun, oh, pointed wow. in her face. So they took off running. My friend said all I thought was get as much distance between me and that gun mm. as possible. So she took off. She ran to the back of the store like in five seconds. <laughs> it was crazy. Sheesh. But no, it was like they use that video now because they had security video. They use that for training. Well, they well they did. Now that they're all defunct now. I guess they're gone. Right. So, so- so, so it was what not to do. <laughs> yeah, no. no like, see this guy, Matt Costin. Don't do that. <laughs> no, it was like I don't. You know, I don't know. They probably used it like, okay, some crazy stuff's gonna go down, maybe. And uh, but no, it was, it was some experiences, man. I mean, I went through. I, it was fun, man. I, I, I it, there's times where I just hated it, but then looking back, I'm like, man, I have so mm. much story material. I actually start writing the script. Seriously. You know, based off of my experiences there, because. It was just wild, man. It was crazy stuff. So yeah. Now this was in. I mean, uh, this is in California, you, L.A. or where? Oh, this is in Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, on the strip. So, so you're you're originally from Las Vegas, then? Uh, no, I'm from Detroit. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So, so you lived in every me. dangerous place on the planet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would tell people my my cousin. I come to visit him in Iowa, and uh, yeah, this is my cousin from Detroit, and they're like, oh, no, great. <laughs> Oh no, oh. Detroit. Yeah, that, so that, yeah, that would not be moving there. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no. I heard it's pretty bad. Uh, actually, right before we moved, uh-huh. uh, a, guy, a guy got mugged in his driveway, like just down the street, block from us. Like, he literally, I see police lights reflecting off my walls in my living room, and I'm like, what's going on? And it's like Jeez. the guy got robbed and like got pistol whipped or speed down or something in his driveway. I'm like, gosh, time Jeez. to go. Dang, man. Yeah. Oh, so. oh, well, it's a good thing you moved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the first week I moved to Vegas, uh-huh. uh, 
I'm, I'm sleeping on my inflatable bed mm -hmm. and uh i heard like uh this crash sound and so i i wake up i'm on the second floor look out the window and there's this this wall and over the wall is the alley and i could see these two dudes running down the alley like with big baggy pants like holding up their pants like so won't fall off right and they're running uh -huh. and then like five seconds after later right after him is this car chasing him and it's like the front end smashed in and sparks are flying it's like chasing them down the alley while they're running on foot Jeez. and i'm like i just looked at it and then I'm, I'm so tired i just was like wow and then i just went back into bed <laughs> <laughs> i mean that was crazy <laughs> matt matt's just like oh well <laughs> the, the funniest one was uh i heard like my the couple down below us or a filipino couple argument uh -huh. yeah and uh i looked out the window i was drawing working on a project and not my computer and i i looked out the window and i see the lady keeps going to her car and her boyfriend keeps letting her little dog out and so the dog keeps walking up to her and she's like trying to go to work and she's like mm -hmm. no you know and so she walks the dog back in does it a couple times third third time she walks in and she runs back to her car like almost screaming and her boyfriend's out running out in his underwear after her, and he what? jumps on top of the hood of her car and she takes off with him on the car driving oh, man. and he's hanging on the top of the car in his underwear screaming and i'm like i'm just watching this <laughs> from my second story window at my art desk and I just go, huh. eating popcorn <laughs> yeah so so i go you know what i think it should i do something i mean and then i go wait there's a gate that she's got to stop at to get out so he'll uh, probably jump off so i go so i waited and yeah sure enough he comes walking back in his underwear all mad yeah uh, it was just yeah, fun stuff happening good memories mm. now you, you still live in la um no i'm in okay. socal but i'm not in la i thankfully um la is too crazy man wow well, mm. i mean you probably already know california's crazy but yeah yeah it's no i'm living where mike miller's living now oh cool that's good yeah that's so good. actually i gotta hang out i gotta i've i've only hung out with him once really yeah and uh he keeps saying that was enough, huh? get some... once was enough <laughs> yeah, no, yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like man we gotta start getting some like pho or something we gotta go out and get some burritos or something yeah uh, yeah yeah so I, i'm gonna have to do that i gotta yeah, i'm surprised you, you guys haven't haven't worked professionally before together yeah i know well, it's yeah it's weird i mean Hey, who knows what the future may bring? Who knows what the future may hold? Yeah, I buy it. Doesn't matter what it is. So, yeah. <laughs> if you guys do do something together, you got one sale from me. So, <laughs> oh, cool. Thanks. <laughs> now, <laughs> how, how how long have you have you been in comics? Um, um I can't. I don't even know. I've I've been doing. Um, let's see. I first started off doing stuff for small publishers, but the largest publisher I ever worked for was um humanoids publishing okay and when was so, that that was who man that was a while ago now if you look up matt Hawson and chuck austin i did a graphic novel series for them mm -hmm. um i did like full color art and everything but my first very first work was uh i did a cover for the inkle for um, the what for the inkle it was the inkle. Um, yeah it was a Jodorowsky's The Inkle with Mobius comic, you know Mobius. Yeah, I know Mobius, but it, okay, so you do, huh? When yeah, was that? yeah. This was, um, I don't know the exact date, but it was early 2000. Really? How oh, cool! That was my very first work I ever did, and I was like so stoked. I felt like, man, for me, that was like my Marvel and DC moment because I got to yeah. work on a, a cover for a comic that Mobius created or co-created. Yeah, and, that was uh, awesome. And Jodorowsky wrote it, but it was like a, it was actually the art, it was about a, a younger version of the character that Mobius worked on, the original Inkle. So it was some other artist who did the art, but, but man, that was my first, it's funny, um, the art editor at the time was David Ulbrich, I think it was, uh -huh. and he was editor at Top Cow Comics, and I remember showing Top Cow, showing him my art, like, years before that, a few years before mm -hmm. that, and he was like, no, this is not a, this is not our kind of stuff, you know. I mean, you do different types of faces with, you know, different noses and all stuff. You don't do that. And then, a few years later, he's the one who's like giving me the job for the cover on Ankle. <laughs> ah. So, but guess what? That was more of my alley. It was French comic book. My art was more European at the time. So. Mhm. Mm but uh. But yeah, that was my first, and uh, people can look it up. 
And I did it with Chuck Austin. I don't even know if you're familiar with Chuck yeah. Austin. Chuck Austin, A U S T E N. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the he's a writer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He uh, did like was it X Men, Superman? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and um, yeah, I worked with him on that series. And cool. This is the funny thing is they, my brother and I pitched. My brother wrote a story, mm -hmm. and we pitched it to them. I wrote like the synopsis of it, and my brother wrote the whole story. Mm -hmm. He came up with the whole story actually, mm -hmm. and so I wrote it and I gave it to him at the convention. But they said, you know, they turned this, turn it down. But what they basically did was they gave Chuck Austin like the bare bones of our story to write his version of it. Ah, uh, they stole it. Yeah, and my brother and I were so ticked off. But my brother's, this is my first job opportunity. Mike's like, I go, should I just take it or turn it down? Mike's like, just do it because if they have some other guy do it, I'll be more mad. That yeah. It's based off our stuff. So uh, he even added stuff into the story. And he probably doesn't even know that it was, you know, he's like probably told him, can you write a story like this? You know, so he's like, he knew sure. it. He knew. He knew. But, uh, <laughs> but, <it's> like, <laughs> they, but here's the thing. They brought on, they wanted to bring on American uh, uh, writers. Yeah. And I have a French last name, so they wanted to put, team me up with them. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I went to San Diego Comic-Con for the first time. Oh, and that's cool. where I met. I did an interview with Humanoids, and that's how I got my first job. Very cool. And uh, that was fantastic. Cover. And then I did a short story for um, uh, a short story for the uh, was it Metal Herlant uh, comic series, which is the French heavy metal magazine. Oh yes, okay, yes, yes. What, what was yeah. that? I can't remember the, the French name. Was it who 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 hurt or something? Hort? Yeah. Something. Uh, metal Herlant. Yeah. Herlant. Yeah, and it was like it's basically the story is cold hard facts. Uh huh. And um, they actually made it into a TV episode. Um, yeah. So it's cool like, to see my art and comic panels, like film yeah. and everything is crazy. I was like, I didn't even know about it until it was already done. Dang. So I was like, what the? Man, you're actually famous. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they actually, they actually um, optioned my uh, story I did with Chuck Austin for a film. Oh, really? Was, uh, Brett Ratner optioned it. He's, he's a production company. Yeah. And he's the guy, you know who he is. He's the guy who did Yeah, X3. Story. Yeah. Yeah, in Rush Hour. Yeah. Yeah. So he optioned it, and then the guy who wrote Master and Commander was, oh, was actually yeah. slated to write the script, and the director mm -hmm. was going to be the guy who did the Losers movie. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So he was going to do it, and you know how, I don't know how it is. I guess, I guess it fell through because I didn't hear anything else of it, but I signed yeah. the, the contracts and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, But yeah, it's funny. They actually they owed me money. Yeah, and, uh, they didn't pay me for like the last part of the last book I did for them. Uh huh. And uh, and then all of a sudden, I think they they owed me like three grand, and mm -hmm. they were like, "Hey, how much do we owe you again?" And I was like, "This is like months, almost a year <laughs> later." It's actually why I had to work at Fry's is because yeah. in the middle of me working on that book, yeah. I just moved to Vegas. They said, "Well, we can't pay you because we're going with chapter 13. Mm. I'm like, "What?" So yeah. I had to go for that part time at Fry's. But anyway. <laughs> uh, they, they, they called me up like months later, almost half a year later, and they go, "Hey, how much money do we owe you again?" They go, oh, mm. three grand," and they're like, "Cool, we'll send that to you." And they sent me the, and they go, "Oh, by the way, we have some contracts for you to sign." I'm like, "Oh, that's why." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you know, they mm -hmm. pay my money so I can sign those contracts. So it was a good thing that they came up. So I got yeah. my money, mm. which I needed at the time just for. Yeah, I've had clients like that. Uh, one client who, uh, you know, oh, and I if if you, if you owe me money. You know, I'll send you, you know, five thousand overdue notices, and then, you know, I'll, I'll eventually stop. You know, maybe after the first like three years of you not paying me, but I'm not gonna yeah. forget. So I had a client who, like, after seven seven years later, decided to contact me because he wanted me to do something for him. Yeah. And, and he said, he says, oh, yeah, did I did I ever pay you for that that one job? I said, nope. And I, <laughs> and I had his overdue notice waiting for him right there. It's like you owe me. <laughs> Exactly a hundred and thirteen dollars and seventy two cents. And <laughs> seventy two cents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> plus, plus, and I added added some more money because he waited so long. Um, yeah. A little uh, extra fee for exactly. Yeah. Yes, a late, late, late fee. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how you do it, man. Yep. So that, you know, it's it's funny. Like Rosetta said, you know, there's a guy he used to work with that everybody in the industry would did not want to work with them. They uh, complain, 
And he said, no, he's okay to work with as long as you know how he is. He'll try to rip you off. You just got to know he is and not let him. Right. And, uh, because the guy be like, you know, I don't know if I can pay you, you know, this month because of this and this. He's like, no, nah, you're going to pay me. Send me my money. And he'd be like, all right, Frank. Right. <laughs> He's like, you yeah. know, you just go, no, nah, you don't make me sue you. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's – as long as you know the person you're working with, mm-hmm. you know. And, um, yeah, I've, I've had some people give me some tips like that. Um, yeah, like, and, like uh, I, I make sure, like, never to work with – Whenever I, I work with someone new, unless they're working, unless it's an actual company or something where I know yeah. they they're not going to rip me off. If it's a private person, you always get a deposit. You know, um, whether it's twenty five percent or thirty three percent, make sure you get a deposit because if you don't, there's nothing to stop them from just taking your drawings and then and then just moving on and and using them themselves or or giving it to someone else to finish because you know you cost too much money or whatever. Don't. Uh, don't do any work unless you get a deposit first from someone because if they're not willing yeah. to put down a deposit, they, 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 they can't afford you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, I mean, I, I, uh, you know, as an artist, you experience a lot of stuff like mm-hmm. where you learn by the seat of your pants, basically. Yeah. You experience or someone mm-hmm. giving you advice, but man, I've learned the hard way on some things, you know? Yeah. No, I and, think we uh, all have. It's just, it's just, yeah. And I wish they would teach this stuff in school, <laughs> yeah. you know, because because it's, it's stuff that, you know, we all end up learning, but we end up learning after after getting screwed over, like, you know, a couple dozen times. And then we, we realize it's like, you know, you have to you you have to get some money up front because there is no guarantee. There are no guarantees that this person will actually pay you eventually. So yeah. so get paid up front a little. When, when you send the sketches in and they approve them, get more money then, and then get the rest of the money before you hand over the final artwork. Yeah. Yeah, so. man. Yeah, it's, it's like you learn those things because you're like, I remember I did one thing online. Someone uh, commissioned me to do a, a full illustration, mm-hmm. um, color illustration of um, Spider Man and Mary Jane. You know, he's like trying to save Mary Jane from uh, Venom. So I did right. this whole thing, and they said it's for a Christmas gift, and it was, I think it was Christmas Eve. I was working on it to finish it up for him, mm-hmm. and so I sent him the smallest JPEG you could send somebody because I didn't know who this person was, and I said, you know, all right, you can go ahead and send me the money. I'll send you the high res. Never heard mm-hmm. from anything from him again. Oh wow! So, so I spent Christmas Eve doing this drawing. They didn't pay me for it. He never paid me, and, mm-hmm. and then I thought, you know what? He probably thinks I'm going to post stuff on my uh, website later, and then he could just, you know, download it. Right. And, uh, so I never posted it up. I Good. just, <laughs> I never posted it still to this day. I never did. Good. Because, so, because when you think about it, if you, if you had sent him the high res, you would never have gotten paid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I learned the hard way. I said, now that's why I usually have money up front. Mm-hmm. And, um, but at the same time now I'm like, okay, now I, I got people like who I owe some art to some commissions and I'm actually working on those. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be that person where I'm like, Taking forever to get this art to him, so because I've heard stories of people that have waited yes. so long, yeah. And uh, so I'm definitely, like I said, I'm working on uh, that stuff uh, behind mm-hmm. the scenes trying to get that stuff done. But but yeah. I still try to get the art, I mean the uh, cash up front, and then it gets that pressure on me to get it done. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I, I'm guilty of that as well. I I, I there's one piece that I, that I need to get done, but I, but I need to get Nasser stuff done first. <laughs> because, oh yeah, yeah. Because there are a lot He's of people. He's on you. Huh? He, he, yeah, he's on me, and uh, you know. I, but right after I finish this book, I have to do a. There's there's a, there's one commission that that's I still have to finish, so I need to get that down out too. So I've been I'm I'm I'm, I'm being bad, Matt. I got to get this stuff done. <laughs> hey, yeah, I know what it is, man. I, you're on me right now, and it, and it's good though because I need mm. to get someone to push me. Yeah. Sometimes I need to whip whip crack over my head. <laughs> keep paddling. Yeah. Yeah. So, but no, yeah, keep rowing. Hmm. But I'm so, getting it done. Now, uh, you met your wife at a convention, right? Um, no, it's or- funny. Um, I met her. I met her um, because I was um, when I first moved out here. Uh-huh. I, I needed to make some extra cash. And so, like, my brother and I, we actually started some art class. We started arts classes at, um, on, uh, was it for comic art, like showing how to do storytelling and everything. And so we put the flyers out in comic stores and bookstores and colleges mm-hmm. and stuff. And uh, 
she wanted to go. She actually was out of state and she was in state visiting her sister and she oh. wanted to go and because she was, you know, getting into comics and everything. And, and uh, so she was like, she uh, couldn't make it. So she said, they contacted me later and they said, do you do private lessons? I'm like, not really, because I don't, you know, you don't know who who's who nowadays. You know, Right, yeah, like, yeah. But um, I kind of like did a little Facebook search on them. They look friendly. So like, you know what? Mm. I go, if my brother and I go together, we can meet somewhere public, like a coffee shop or something. We can uh, do private lessons. So so right. that's how we met. We did that. And it's funny. I guess to the place we met her, I met her at Heaven Sent. That's the place it was called. It was I'm sorry? Like, what? It was, a, it was a cafe called Heaven Sent. Oh, cool. That's neat. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's so we, <laughs> yeah, so we met there and we, you know, talked comics, showed her some stuff, and then over the years, we just kind of like kind of kept in touch. And That's she, nice. And she was visiting family. Mm -hmm. We finally did go. We went to a comic convention, took her to Comic Con, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it just kind of we were That's awesome. for years before that I started dating. Oh, very cool. That's nice. Yeah, so, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like I said for me. I'm. I was one of those guys as a comic artist. I wasn't out looking for, you know, getting into any relationship or anything. I was just working and. Right. trying to get things going you know so mm -hmm. uh i wasn't looking and yeah girls get in the way but i think maybe that that's why it worked out because i wasn't looking <laughs> i wasn't yeah i wasn't like i gotta get hooked up here yeah 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 same same with me i mean yeah i, I just met my wife at uh um Actually, it was it was at a, a restaurant. I, I a friend had, had invited me because it was my birthday, and he was in a Bible study, like a tennis Bible study, and they were going to that restaurant for dinner. And he asked if I wanted to come. I said, "Yeah, sure." And my wife was in a Bible study. Oh so, wow! So I, I met her then, and then it wasn't. A, but we you know we were friends over the next several months, and then we you know we finally dated, started dating maybe about four or five months later. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, you know, God, God has his ways of getting people together. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how many pages will modded be when it's done? Um, it's going to be about 48 pages. Roughly. Okay. Oh, good. So, might be a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the goal. Yeah. Cool. Have you seen Black Widow yet? What was that? Have you seen Black, Black Widow yet? You know what? I haven't seen it yet. Is it? I, I you said is they're live streaming on. I, I probably would like to see it in the theater, but is it good enough to see in the theater? Yeah, yeah, it is. No, no, it's it's a, it's an actual it's a Disney yeah you know, it's an actual uh, you know Marvel film. It's it's good. Um, okay. I mean, it, it's it was originally supposed to come out a year ago, over a year ago, I think last May, May of twenty twenty. Oh, what's what's okay, yeah, yeah. But then you know, COVID happened, so they pushed everything back. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so it's finally getting released now. But it's but it's good. I, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And and it was like I said, it wasn't as, it wasn't like Captain Marvel where it was just like garbage. It was it was it was a good it was a good movie. Okay, cool, cool. No, that's so, good to know because yeah, I mean, I like the character, I like the actress. Yeah. So yeah, no, she her, she she made Scarlett Johansson made Black Widow really cool character and i i really think they should they should have put out this movie years ago um you know back probably back around 2016 2017 okay yeah yeah instead of waiting to 20 you know for you know now or 2020 because i, I think a lot of people would would have she, on her own, she's she's an interesting character just because of the character's backstory. So I, I, there's a lot to tell there, and I, I don't know why they waited so long. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, they, they wait till after she. You know, yeah, after the character's dead. You yeah, know, it's like that is spoilers. Make sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if you, if you don't know Black Widow's dead by now, then you have, you know the character's been dead for what a few years now in the MCU. Yeah, man, it's crazy, and it's probably been a few years. Yeah. Yeah, it's like I remember. I was like, when they did that, I'm like, what? Like, why? And mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, they're probably. I noticed most all the main characters are kind of killing them off or whatever because they're like right. a older. Yeah. And they're, they can't. They don't probably have a contract that says, okay, this is the end. 
But mm -hmm. uh, I kind of surprised they did a Black Widow movie too. I'm like, what? I'm like, I thought they killed her off. That's it for her. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like you said, uh, kind of on the put on the back burner, especially with the 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but, but no, yeah. It, I'm glad it sounded good. Yeah. No. Yeah, so it's, it's it's worth is worth the watching. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the last uh, last Marvel movie I'm I'm interested in seeing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know what you mean, man. All, all the other ones look like garbage, so I'm like, eh, whatever. Yeah, you know how I feel about those. Yeah. I've probably seen those live streams where get people, some people a little fired up. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, here's the thing is like, uh, yeah, you could see where they're going with certain things and what their mm -hmm. agendas are. So that's what I kind of complain about. Cause, yeah. Um, I, I like different types of stories, and yeah. it doesn't have to be like, this way or that way, but I just don't like the agenda crap. So yeah. that's all I rail against. Um, there's yeah. actually nice production values on a lot of their shows, but oh, yeah. even but even the writing though isn't is so bad to me. I'm like, mm -hmm. it just seems like they're just. I mean, you yeah. know, you've seen. Yeah, like you said. I mean, I, yeah, I was like, uh, like both uh, WandaVision and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldiers. Like, I was really looking forward to them. And they start off really good. I mean, they were like really strong shows, really strong. And then in the last couple of episodes for, for each of them, you know, it was the final two episodes of, of both WandaVision and, and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier that they just nosedived into just propaganda city. It was just, it yeah. was just garbage. It, it just, and I was like, why did you have to ruin what you spent, you know, five, six, eight episodes building up by by just yeah. putting something so stupid and nonsensical into the storyline that clearly has nothing to do with the characters and is totally about your personal opinions as the writers or the director. It's like, I, why did you ruin that? And uh, yeah, it's, it's annoying. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. That's why I didn't even want to watch Loki because, you know, after seeing those first two shows, I was like, I'm not... I have no interest in watching Loki now because you killed yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I give you two yeah. chances. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. I was like, man, I, the Loki one. I actually, like I said, I like the actors. Oh yeah, I like, no, I love. I like the Tom characters. Yeah, yeah. It's just I, they just try to use them for their own mm -hmm. purposes, and because they know people like them, they know it resonates with people. So they're like, okay, what can we do to get our messaging across? You know, mm -hmm. we'll utilize characters that people like. Uh, <laughs> right. And then, but it's like, yeah, and then. It's it's true. It's like they they have you kind of like over a barrel because it's like for fans who are like diehard, they love the uh, actors. It's like mm -hmm. they're kind of like, well, I don't like what they're doing, but I love the characters, so I'm gonna keep watching. And they know it, so they kind of got you, right? Yeah. Because you're like, you're gonna watch it, and you're gonna love mm -hmm. it, <laughs> exactly. even if you complain about it. It's like crack, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you complain, you about, and then they they do whatever they want. Back. Yeah, you'll be back. Yeah. So, not uh, me. It's yeah, like after, no. it only took me a few decades to catch on, but now that now that I have, <laughs> it's like not getting any more money out of me. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm the same way. I'm just like, yeah. There's other options out there. There's other. Oh, yeah. 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 So, and that's what we're doing. We're creating those other options, right? Yep. 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 Some more. other forms of entertainment, some other See, avenues for yeah, people to put money when they, in. When they make the live action version of Mada, you can't let them ruin it, Matt. Yeah, yeah. You know they're gonna yeah. dangle they're gonna dangle a few a few million dollars in front of your face like they did with Larry Hama with uh with uh the Snake Eyes, and uh, they say, hey Larry, I, I we know that you didn't want uh, Snake Eyes to be Asian, but here's here's twenty million dollars. You sure you don't want to be Asian? Don't change your mind, Matt. Don't cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't do it. I'm not a sellout, man. Okay, <laughs> I won't sell it to the man. No. I've had opportunities to like <laughs> do that, and I just was like, I didn't care about how much money the people offer me. That's just mm -hmm. me personally. I'm like, yeah, I just like I could. I, I think of it this way: Could I live with myself? That's all I care about. Because <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If I could live with myself, I'm like, uh -huh. I, so that's why I turn things on. Like, I gotta live with myself, and constantly that hanging over my head. I'm like, something that that would I don't believe in. I'm like, nah, sorry. Yeah, I go. I don't care if you offer me millions of dollars. I just Personally, I just can't do it. Yeah. And it's like, um, 
Because I, I have people offer me projects with some like award-winning mm -hmm. writers, and yeah. the book I turned down mm -hmm. actually was on the like number one sellers list. But oh, wow. it was like anti anti American like truth uh, and stuff. Right. So I was yeah. kinda like I was like, uh and it yeah. wasn't like, you know, it's like a hard take on war or anything. It was just kinda like putting the mm -hmm. troops in the light of just, you know, that I was like, you know what, I don't I don't like that. So no, yeah. I turned my friend kinda hooked me up with this writer he from um he's from the Times. Mm -hmm. And um he's like, He's got he's got clout, man, you wanna do something with him. And uh I was just like I found out what the story was. And uh, I was just like, yeah, I can't do it. Mm. And uh, but yeah, I turned it down later on, like a year later. I see it on the bestsellers list, New York Times, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I, I don't, I have no, I don't even care because I'm like, oh, you know, because like uh, to me, I go, it's not about the, mo I want to make money, but right. I got to live with myself too. Yeah, that's the most important thing to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So, hey, um, I'm gonna make a quick run to throw my clothes in the dryer. Sure. <laughs> And I'll be back. It's okay, we'll make fun of you while you're gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody, start making fun of Matt so I can read it. Um, yeah. Hey, John John Dillard's here. John so, Dillard. Hey, Toom's here too. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Vic. Awesome. All you guys, share out the share out the link to the to the live stream on Twitter and Facebook. Let people know that Matt Costin is here, spilling the beans about all all the top creators in comics. So, um. Vic asks, what, what's Kassin doing? A commission? No, he's working on his upcoming um, crowdfunded comic book called Modded, M-O-D-D-E-D. -D -E -D. Um, it'll probably, probably the, the campaign will probably launch this year sometime, but it's written by Narwhal and uh, colored by Narwhal. I think some other people are working on it as well, but Matt is doing the, the illustration. Um, you can watch Matt working on the book every Monday on his channel, Matt Kassin. M A T T C O S S I N, all one word, on YouTube. So yeah, thank you, Mark Anthony. You just typed in modded. Um, John Dillard says I will drop a sack of Mexican gold Libertads on Matt's door, front door, to race swap his characters to Kard Kardashians. He might do that. Um, <laughs> I will also take those uh, those Mexican gold Libertad Libertads, um, you know, to uh, you know, to draw. As well, um, Vic says the Resident Evil series on Netflix is good. Resident Evil series, I haven't seen that. I guess it's cheaper to produce shows than make video games. All the programming and buying CDs for all platforms. Hmm, interesting. Um, Eric and Boyd says that more Marvel characters are planned to die off. Huh, interesting. Um. Comic book is here. He says, hashtag kick Nasser. I agree. Um, Vic asks, where are you Where are you getting your reference from, Gemini? Straight out of the mind. Yes, this is uh, straight out of my sick, twisted mind. I, I don't have reference for this other than, you know, memory. I mean, not, not that I actually did this, but, you know. <laughs> I commenced to nothing. Um... But yeah, it's out of my head. It'd probably be better if I if I did have a reference. So. Um, let's see. Vic says, uh, damn, that girl, fine. I got my Titan 2. I'm excited for you guys to finish fulfilling. So are we. I look forward to fulfilling this book and getting the art done and mailed off to everybody. Um... And Eric M. Boyce says, if you watch Chester Busby's YouTube channel, he shares verified information regarding what is planned for Marvel. Okay, cool. Everybody should subscribe to Chester Busby's channel too because uh, he does cool stuff. He has Drawn and Quarter Fan Edition every uh, every Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And throughout the week, he has a lot of great content regarding comic books and um, you know comic book news. So make sure to subscribe to Chester Busby's channel on YouTube. You will... You will not regret it. But yeah, five people are here. I'm thank you very much for hanging out with Matt and I, and uh, you know, just listening to us sort of talk about stuff. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and subscribe to Matt's channel as well. Make sure to uh, go down here below. You can see the little ticker scrolling across your screen. 
my fingers in shadow, deep shadow. Maybe I should use the other hand. There we go. That's better. And uh, go here to www.secret-comics.com. And, uh, yeah, that's where you can find the link to uh, buying the book I'm working on, which is Secret Comics Presents. It is a horror anthology. As you might be able to tell from this drawing I'm making, it's a horror anthology. And um, it is currently on sale, but the campaign will close very soon because as soon as I finish drawing the book and I send it off to the printer, we're going to close the campaign. So make sure to go to secret, secret-comics.com and or you can click the link in the description down below or over here in the chat. It's pinned to the top, to the top of the chat up there. So just click those links. It'll take you over there. You can buy a comic book from us for as little as $8 for a digital copy. Um, Jiminy, tell Mark what happened to me. Hey, Yash is here. How you doing, Yash? Um, what happened to you, Vic? Um, are you talking about the, um, uh, you said that you gave someone a ride, you gave someone a ride and then they ended up holding someone hostage? That one, that story? Yeah. Yeah. Don't give people rides. <laughs> It's like, unless you know what they what they have planned, uh, that I, th I think that's the story he's he's talking about. It. He apparently he, he his neighbor asked him for a ride somewhere. He gave him a ride to his I guess ex girlfriend's house, and he ended up taking her hostage. And uh, yeah, so. Mm. Oh yeah, Yash uh, Yash posted a. Uh, a picture of a of a alligator gar he caught um, in uh, what what where was it? it was it was I guess it was in Alabama but yeah I saw I saw a picture of it in the net very cool how how big was that um, Yash was that I mean it looked pretty big a gar for you guys who don't know it's a fish but it has like a, has like alligator teeth. That's like really sharp teeth in his mouth. Forty inches, nine pounds. Dang, wow. Anderson Creek, man. You catch this during the day or at night? That's pretty cool. I used to go fishing with Yash and our, our friend Rob back in high school. We we get up at like, sheesh, I hate it. I, mean, I kind of hated it, it because we got up at like five in the morning and, uh, and we would go down to Deerfield Beach uh, Pier and fish. Mark Anthony says, never in the habit of giving people a lift. Here's a number for a cab. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, nowadays you have uh, Uber and stuff, but I guess if people don't have money, then they uh, they want to they wanna see if they can... You know, get a ride from uh, from their neighbors and stuff. I mean, I, under, I understand it, but you know, you have to be you have to be careful, even even with your neighbors. So, Night. They're nocturnal predators. Oh, very cool. Vic says an original original forest gump here, trying to go the extra mile to treat people kindly. No, I understand that. Yeah, it's just it's. I feel bad because it's like nowadays you have to sort of like try to figure out the. You know, you want to be nice to people, but you also don't want to. I guess one be taken advantage of, and two. Get into a situation that you know is less than desirable, <laughs> like someone getting taken hostage. <laughs> it's like, oh man, and I and I hate I hate feeling like that. I, I hate the fact that you know the world is is like that where you have to sort of be making these decisions. 
Uh, Mark Anthony says, yeah, nowadays you have to be really skeptical of some people. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because I think most people want to be nice to to uh, eat nice to other people, and but it's just uh, the, you know the realities of the world like you know getting away and it's like ah oh, man, it's like I want to you know it's like you know you see someone who's you know on the street you know homeless it's like you want to help them. But then you think it's like, well, are they going to use the money for something other than food? You know, are there better ways to help them? So, I don't know. You know, know, we each have to sort of make our own decisions in terms of what we're going to do with that. John Durr says, I don't care who you are. If you need a ride, I'll give you a ride. But I need half needs too, so quid pro quo. <laughs> you need a ride, I'll give you a ride, but I'm gonna need I'm gonna need twenty dollars in exchange. <laughs> Mark Anthony says they're getting beer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sheesh. Yasha says, just checked online, and a 40-inch alligator gar is 13 pounds, 11 ounces, so bigger than I thought. Yeah. Well, you're you're a strong guy, Yash, so uh, I don't think you had a problem. <laughs> hmm. I'm trying to figure out the shadows for this. It's always... Hmm. Always give me the biggest problems with drawing comic books, anyway, because I'm gonna have to make it up in my head, try to visualize. I mean, I I have a, like a rough idea of how I want this to look, but I want it to look like really creepy. But getting getting it to look come out on paper the way I sort of see it in my head is the is the trick that's the trick Um, Mark Anthony says, where's the light coming from? I, I'm not sure. I mean, I think the light is like, um, I'm not sure. I just know how I want her to look. I want her face to be completely in shadow. I want her hand to be obviously visible. I want, so it's like, it's sort of like fantasy light. It's not lighting that's like realistic. It's just sort of like the, the feeling that I want it, yeah, creepy. I want it to be creepy. Um, and so in my mind's eye, it's like I see what I think will look creepiest. And I guess I'm trying to... get the, the lighting to... All right. Oh, 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 my gosh. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Matt's still here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, who's good behind me? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> there, there's, this, there's this meme where it shows, like, uh, you know those those background characters? They're like uh-huh. fish in SpongeBob. Yeah. They, there's a background where the, it's a meme where it shows this fish, and it's like uh, he's, like, sitting at a computer, but he's turning around looking behind him like he's scared. And uh-huh. it says, it says, uh, 
uh, when I'm in a Zoom meeting and the person tells me, can you uh, ask the little kid girl behind you to stop running back and forth? You can, oh, of, uh, no. And he goes, but I live alone. <laughs> 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 it's hilarious. He says, my eyes are bugging out like, what? <laughs> You tell that little girl behind you to stop running around there. <laughs> now my, uh, I I have experienced some some things, like uh, my, and my dad where he worked, uh -huh. um, he worked at a county building, yeah, in uh here in California, and he uh, I pick him up once in a while from work late at night, and uh, yeah. Anyway, the kid, the cleaning crew that worked there, uh. They had some things happening to him that was freaking him out, and one of them like didn't come back. But uh, there's one she was pushing her cart, uh -huh. and uh, her cleaning cart, and it just stopped. And she was like pushing it and just pushing, and she's look, it won't budge. She looks down at the wheels, nothing's there blocking it, and it just won't move. And she's like getting freaked out, like what's going on, you know? Uh -huh. And uh, freaked her out. And then uh, they she, they later they saw kids like running, like in the the offices that were like closed and they're dark you know it's like they've seen kids running around like and they're like what the you know and it was just like freaking them out huh and uh my dad who was uh who was a pastor actually uh -huh. christian pastor he like he just was rebuking uh the devil <laughs> and he's like he was there going i rebuke you in the name because he said he could feel something evil there too like a presence you know wow so he just you know rebuking that and everything but i i went to pick him up right uh-huh and uh i seen him he was outside in the parking lot with another employee and they're look they're like in front of this car and the car was like the hood was up look at that we're helping this guy out right we're working on his car or something right so i pull up and i'm waiting he walks over and uh he's like i'm gonna i have to grab my stuff out of the off you know the building and i'll be back out so like, okay right. so he goes in there and it's, this is at night so I'm sitting there, and I have my I positioned my rearview mirror so I could see that car that they were looking at. It's like behind me, like five spaces, whatever. It's like kind of the back of the parking lot. So I could see it just because I thought there was a guy in there. Yeah. And then I heard the car like starting like doo -doo 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 -doo, trying to start up. And I'm like, oh, the guy's trying to start it up. Uh -huh. And then they finally got it going. It's like vroom, vroom, and he's like revving the engine. So the engine's revving and everything, and I'm like, wow, he got it going. So I'm like, it's weird. He's just sitting there. And then uh. I saw my dad walk into the glass to the glass doors to get out. As soon as he like, opened the door, the, the engine cut out, like stopped. What? And then, uh, so he comes up and I go, uh, he gets in the car and I go, so the guy that you're, what's up with the guy's car that you're helping? Yeah. That, that, you know, I heard him start it up. He's like, what are you talking about? There's nobody there. I'm like, what? Ah! He's, like, yeah. he's like, there's parts of that car missing. Like someone stripped it because there's no way he could run. Like I heard him run and rev in the car behind me. There's no other cars around. And I was like, man, that Bad. really uh, kind of freaked me out. I was like, man, but Bad. that kind of taught me some things. But, yeah, I was just like, man. You're killing me. You're scaring I'm, me. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, there's things, like I said, <laughs> as a Christian, I, I'm not freaked out because I know what it is, right? Right. And, uh, yes. so it's, it, it's but it devil. still kind of freaks you out, though. It's the devil. Like, that should freak you out. That freaks me out. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like, well, man, I'm telling you, man, I tell you things that I've encountered that would probably – like the hair stand up on your neck, but you, but yeah, you know what, man. You, you know what the scariest movie I ever saw was for what? me. Have you ever seen um what was it called? Oh my gosh, Paranormal ex Paranormal Activity. Oh no, I've never seen it. I heard man, it. I, 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 I swear I saw that movie, and I've seen I, I mean I, I I've seen tons of horror movies. Um, I couldn't sleep for like two or three days after watching that. <laughs> It's, and they don't show anything. That's the thing. It's like it's oh man. It's what your mind is. Uh, it's it scared the heck out of me. It's basically these 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 two. Are they, I don't know if they're newlyweds or they're just like a, a couple. You know, they move into it. They move into into a new house, and they they do they stupidly use a Ouija board to. And it's like one of those movies like the Blair Witch Project where it's all video camera stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's like it's like a, you know, sort of a point of view type film where all you're seeing are like the the, the found videotapes like after everything's happened. Oh, okay. And it's like it's just like 
to me was terrifying because you're seeing these people like you know using the Ouija board laughing about it ha 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 and then like weird stuff starts happening and then oh my gosh and then by the end of the movie I'm just like no no I should have watched this I should not have watched this and yeah, for, yeah. at two nights at for two nights afterwards it's like I could not sleep because every time the lights were out I was like ah no yeah see I don't watch horror movies that said I have I. I don't know. This is I should say this. I'm not a no. horror movie fan, but right. I've watched different horror movies. Mm -hmm. But I usually don't watch them. Like the only ones I can watch are like survival horror type stories, or Which you know, ones? survival horror, kind of like you know, like uh, the Lost Boys, Vampire, right? Right. That's what about that's entertaining. Oh, it's about like, yeah, like monster survive. movies. Monster yeah, movies. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I like those. So, yeah, those you know, even the zombies. I, I'm not into the gore, but I do like the survival aspect of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I got you. So. Yeah. But um, but I I watched um, what was it um, uh, I'm trying to think what that's called. I had it. I just had it. To, oh, uh, you ever seen the movie called The Gate? The Gate. Yeah, it's got Stephen Dorff in it. Um, no. the guy, he was in the first uh, Blade. Blade. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. No. He's yeah, like a kid. He, he's probably like nine or ten years old in the movie. Okay. It's, it's basically him and his friend. They he and his friend accidentally open up like this gateway to hell in their backyard uh-huh just a little accident you know <laughs> mm -hmm. accidentally open up a gate to hell accidentally yeah you know it, it happened you know, anymore, crazy yeah. night starts because the parents leave and that leave the older sister to babysit she's a teenager oh. and then all, all hell literally breaks, breaks loose but <laughs> it's like it's one of those movies where i would not usually like watch the horror movies but um since this has to do more with actual like like the devil and Mm -hmm. demons and stuff like that that's i'll kind of see what they're trying to do you know right and plus I, I'm, I'm writing some stories and my brother do some stories that we think will also um intrigue non-christians right and uh mm -hmm. it deals with supernatural people are into supernatural stories and stuff too you know yeah even if they don't like of course I think, believe in that that's, that's, that's why horror is so, such a big genre but i think people i've i've talked to people when i mm -hmm. i lived in vegas I talked to people. I got in a conversation with some fellow employees about Supernatural, and we started talking about it. And every single person, I, even customers that came up and overheard us, mm -hmm. every single person experienced something Supernatural oh, that really? they couldn't explain. And it oh. kind of shocked me because I was like, what? I thought I was the only one going through you know, experiencing stuff. And they're like, they, people would say stuff. And then I'm like, but then they still were like, you know, skeptical. And I'm like, dude, how do you explain what you just happened to you? That's insane. Right. Like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> Dang it, you don't believe. I go, you have a problem. Like, there's one uh, artist I was talking with. Um, I was friends with on Facebook was um, yeah. Troy Nixie. I don't know if you ever mm -hmm. Troy Nixie. Yeah. Uh, Troy Nixie, he worked on with Mike Mignola on uh, a few projects. Um, but he worked on some, I think, he worked on um, Neil Gaiman. He did a story with Neil Gaiman, too, about a werewolf. But, um, but anyway, he actually directed the movie, too. Um, he directed a movie with Jennifer Connelly. It was about these um, little tiny creatures, like demons, that would like uh, were like plaguing their house. They just moved into. It was like Guy. I said uh, Guy Pierce was in it. Guy and Jennifer Connelly. Well, how but, long ago was this? The only, only horror movie I remember uh, her being in was uh, was it Dark Waters? Yeah, yeah. Well, this one was like they had a little kid and he was seeing these little creatures in their house and. Huh. But he directed that one. But anyway, he he the Troy, Troy Nixie was like I was talking to him and he's like, oh yeah, because he knows I was a Christian, right? So he would kind of like kind of give me a little hard time sometimes. But mm -hmm. uh, but he said um, he experienced something where he was working on his computer and he heard the sound of like like he had wooden floors. So he heard the sound of like dog claws like walking, mm -hmm. you know, like across his floor. But he didn't have a dog. You know? <laughs> okay. And so he said he turned around and he seen this black figure like a dog standing. In the hallway just looking at him what and then and then he said it just disappeared stop and then and i said so you don't believe in angels or demons but how do you explain that and he's like well, right. it was just energy energy like, energy yeah it was mm -hmm. energy yeah. and it will kind of go you call it energy it called spirit you know whatever yeah. it's the same thing he just he just was like come on man you're in denial now right mm -hmm. but um but i don't know he might even you know because i mean he's kind of like um the person who gave him the job, Mike Manola, but it was also what's that? Del Toro guy, the director. I'm sorry, repeat that. 
the guy who directed uh, Hellboy was his name Del, Del Toro. Oh, 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 uh, uh, Guillermo, 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 yeah, Guillermo, 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 yeah, Guillermo, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh. Well, that guy. See, I don't know a lot about him, but I know that he's got to be into some cult, you know. Uh, he's got to be for the stuff that I've seen in his films. He's like got to um, be the legit into stuff because he's put stuff in there and it's some legit stuff that's you know yeah i don't yeah i don't know his, i don't know about his personal life or his personal beliefs but um yeah i imagine, I imagine like you know there's probably a lot of stuff mixing with you know catholicism you know mexican um you know sort of uh uh folklore i mean i'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff mixed in that makes his uh his movies. I mean, I, I'm, what was that one he did with the about the vampire and the uh, and and like a watch? It was um, it was like one of his earlier movies. Can't remember the name of it, but it was really good. It was like a modern day vampire story. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I I've only seen Hellboy of his. That's the only film of his I've seen. You know what? I think I did see. Didn't you was see? Was it the Labyrinth? Or something? Yeah, you didn't see Pan's Labyrinth. You... I seen that one. That one was really. That was great. Film. I loved it. See, that one I I didn't like because it's super occultic. It was just like a lot of symbolism in there that was there? people don't know what it means. Yeah, okay. they, there's well, hidden I, things I in there. I was one of them because I thought it was great. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like it's it seems like iconic, but there's a lot of imagery that has hidden uh, meaning to it. Yeah, um, like esoteric stuff. And that's my brother and I sometimes will check out stuff like that because we want to see because because our, our term is we always say, oh, that guy's an Illuminati puppet. That's for sure. <laughs> And uh, it's a, we watch, yeah, yeah. So we watch that, and uh, it's kind of like our term that we use for you know, people in the know of like certain you know, things. And because you know how there's like a revolving door in Hollywood and government and all that stuff. Those mm -hmm. people who kind of they go to the same parties and all that stuff. But oh yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, but we've been seeing like I'm one of those guys who's like always skeptical, right? And I know uh -huh. like I'm drawing a quarter that I'm like the resident conspiracy theorists i think like you know as far as well, well, you, you are on, on, on any any stream you're on you're the resident conspiracy yeah theorist, yeah so that's like, okay. except for the people who are like you know i've heard people in the comments like finally someone that's actually awake on the stream uh, <laughs> but, it, but, it's, but it's like uh, here's the thing it's like it's it's funny because a lot of the stuff now is just so blatantly in your face it's not even the conspiracy oh yeah they'll try just, to hide it half of no it, yeah. it's just right there and it's funny it's like a lot of the people who I had conversations with who are like Oh, that's conspiracy. I tell them, well, what do you think now that it's in the open? They're like, so big uh, deal. What's what's the big deal? I'm like, okay, so first you're saying it's a big deal because of conspiracy theory. Right. Now you're like, you don't think they're wrong with it. So which is it, man? It's like, you know, it's like, so like, yeah, it, it just kind of gets on me. But but I kind of try to utilize that, though, to my advantage by um, I look into some stuff and I thought, you know, what can I put in my stories that might draw people because it has some similar vibes, right? Mm -hmm. Something that seems dark, but it's from like, you know biblical christian perspective mm -hmm. and um yeah so i kind of try to uh, sometimes i'll look into things like for instance um i was telling you about that anime uh jujitsu kaisen yes 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 yeah i, I checked that out because it was I've seen a lot of fan art and everything and, and that's mm -hmm. more of a supernatural one too yeah but it kind of showed me like hey people aren't into supernatural stories and uh yeah and i thought that kind of lends itself to what i want to do too because as a christian i want there's supernatural things i want to put in mind yeah. So I thought, you know what? I got some stories I want to tell that I can utilize that type of interest mm -hmm. for cool. readers. So, so we're working on stuff right now. My brother has one of the projects we're working on. And it's going to be mm -hmm. fun. It's going to be some Christians might even go, it's too dark. We'll just, <laughs> but I'm, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be yeah. action and oh, good. Some biblical narrative to it. But it's going to be yeah. probably considered horror, I guess. I don't know. Oh, good. I look forward to, to finding out more about it and seeing it. Um, have you ever have you seen a lot of like uh, Japanese horror anime or manga? Um, only like the guy who did Spiral. Spiral. And, uh, he did yeah he did a comic called Spiral where it's just it's always about these this town that has like all these weird supernatural phenomena happening and people are dying and turning into creatures and just weird stuff just oh. crazy stuff I mean it's like out there but hmm. that and also there's a comic called I Am a Hero. And I am a hero. Yeah, basically it's like a zombie apocalypse story where okay. this otaku nerd guy, I think he's mm -hmm. supposed to be a comic artist, just survives and he's trying to survive, you know, the usual crazy people. Right. But uh, yeah, those are only two, I think. Hmm. Why, did you, have you uh, looked into them? Yeah, I mean, 
I've, I've seen a couple that are really, and I don't know if, I guess you can call them horror. They're sort of like horror suspense. One is called Another. And that, I mean, I saw that one years ago, and it, it was both an anime and a manga. Anime was based on a manga. But it's really good. It's like, it's, I, I, I'm not really big on, on like gore and stuff. I don't yeah, really like it. <laughs> Despite what I'm drawing here. <laughs> <laughs> about this picture that. that you see me drawing right now, I'm not really into gore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the um, but another, I think that's why I like about another is that again, it's like um, Paranormal Activity, where a lot they don't really show a lot of gore, but when they do. It's like, it's shocking because it's it's scary without the gore, you know. So when gore actually happens, it like just takes it up like another level. It's like, oh my gosh, yeah. And it's like to me, it's like it's like terrifying because you don't know what's gonna happen, and and when something does happen, it's just like it, it it's it's terrifying to me. But another another is one, and then um, and then another anime um, that was really good was. Um, and this is on this one's on Netflix. I, I think another might be another might be on Netflix as well. And I think they also made a live action version of these as well. Also, oh okay. Um, another and the other one is called Erased. Erased. Oh yeah, I, I saw that one. Yeah. Erased. And I, again, I don't know if you call it horror or suspense. It's sort of like it's on the it line. Like, between them. It feels like horror sometimes though. It's, yeah. It's like you're like, oh man, like I actually as the first thing I saw was a live action movie version of it. Okay. Then Watch I saw the anime. Yeah. Yeah. But those two were to my mind were really good because they weren't they weren't they weren't focused on gore and violence. They were it was it was just it was a suspense of what's going to happen next. And yeah. You don't know. It's just like what what's happening what's gonna happen and and that sort of stuff scares me more than i mean if i watch a werewolf movie and werewolves are, are eating people i don't care because it's just it's fantasy it's like yeah i mean it's i it's know right what you're saying there. it's like it can't happen like like you know the way you're seeing this film where there's some guys and just you know yeah and so you're kind of like it, you can be like freaked out where you jump like oh or it's grossed out but you're not going to be like wait there's a guy who's a serial killer Right, and he could be actually. Now we think he's actually interacting with somebody's loved one in the story, and you're like, "Oh no!" Yeah, and you're like, "Get out of there!" Yeah, yeah, well, that you... one get got me too. That one really. I watched that with my wife, and she was freaked out too. We were like, "Oh gosh!" You know. Yeah, yeah. it was. That it was. A, it was a. It was a good. It was a good show. Good movie. Whatever. And and, and I like the fact that they they combine sort of like time travel with. Yeah, um, yeah, that was with, great. With uh, fantasy, with with horror, with suspense, it, it combined so many elements into it. It was just like, oh, this this is this is really cool. That's what got scared. me. That's what got me pulled in. I'm I'm a, like I love time travel stories. So yeah, that got me pulled into it right away. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I mean, what happens to like the main character? He gets flashed back to he he's put basically put back in his body when he was a kid, right? Back uh, yes, to that time yes. period, but he's got the mind of an adult. Yeah, like from himself in the future. Right. So he's like soaking in like his mom and friends mm -hmm. and school and this is. But then he realizes, wait, I remember, you know. And he's like remembering things that happened in the future. Uh huh. Things that he forgot about in the past. Yeah, it's it's so good. I don't want to say anything that would ruin it, but man, I I definitely recommend that. People, it's called Erased. Yeah, and that's uh, I think it's still on Netflix. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Is that the anime version? Uh, the live action version I saw on Netflix. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. You, did you see the live action too? The anime version may also be available there, but I don't know. But you saw the live action. Like, was that the first time you seen that story? Like, um, no, I saw the I saw the animated version first. Oh, um, wow. I, I, I downloaded that from the internet. Cool. And then after that, I I I I heard that they had a, made a live action version for Netflix, and then I watched it there. So I, I like I like the anime version better, but that's that's just me. So yeah, it's like it's funny. It's like man, that freaked me out. Just like um, I saw the anime version too. I was starting to watch it, and I go, uh, "How come I know this story? It seems familiar to me." Yeah. I'm like wait, this is the live action we watched, and I go, "Oh yeah." 
Yeah. We were getting freaked out watching it. Like the part where like one of the characters gets stabbed just freaked me out in the anime. I was like, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Cause you're like, you just like the character and then you're like, no. Yeah. So, and it's just, it's rough watching it cause you're like, it, oh my gosh. And that's why there's, to me, they're so good because it's like, they, they make these characters so likable and it's just like, and then they just like, like horrible things. And it's, you're, you're just, you're so emotionally invested in it by that time. It's like, ah, why? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Naruto, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's funny is I I still have to see those by the way Naruto the I haven't watched any of that surprise which one what uh, Naruto you ever watched Naruto no I, that's the one I never watched because I don't know why I never watched it. Uh, okay, I'm, you're you're I'm 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 kicking you off the stream get out of here. <laughs> I don't know why I've never seen it Matt you have you have to watch Naruto it's been yeah, it's, it's been twenty years since it came out oh really. Yes, wow. it came out. In, the anime came out in like two thousand one. Oh wow, Matt, Matt, you have to watch it. It's it's so good. Um, I will warn you though that probably twenty five percent of it is filler and it's complete garbage. <laughs> oh yeah. So, but that you, that you don't get to the filler probably until you know maybe halfway through the series because the the animation company had caught up with the manga. And so they they didn't have anything else to 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 to, uh, to adapt. Oh, I see. So because the manga was still ongoing, so there were plenty. Of, there are a lot of times when the the manga would get to a certain point, the animation company would catch up to it, and then they had to wait so they had to make fillers until the manga got far enough ahead where they could start making new episodes. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Man. Okay. Yeah, but the the main storyline of Naruto is is really good. I mean, it's it's still my favorite anime. Um, cool. You know, all these years later, it's just I I I just I I just find a character like really identifiable just because he's he's like this kid who who like no one I mean not that no one liked me but but you know as as a you know I, I think I think for for nerds or geeks or whatever you know it's a kid who's like an outcast from you know his whole village. And he spends like his whole life like trying to prove that you know he's worthy of respect and stuff. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a relatable character, so you can relate yeah. to his his emotional journey, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You that's know, how it I, should be. You know, that's how they they get people, man. You get readers because you they can connect. You know. Right. You have to connect to the character some way somehow. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. 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 There's good ones like that. Like that's what gets me to. Is uh, yeah. I can relate to the character even if it's not the main character. I can relate to one of the characters. Right. Yeah. In the story, you know. Yeah, and that's another cool thing about it. I mean, because he's he's uh, there are so many like uh, you know sort of uh, I guess co-stars or you know minor characters in, in the uh, in the series, but they're all they all have they're all very unique. They're all very likable, or, or or even if they're not likable, I mean they all have unique personalities that that. It's, it, it it seems the characters seem very believable, very credible. They're not just variations of the same character. They yeah. all have their own unique quirks and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, that's cool. That's that's how it should be, man. You know. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's good writing because then they then you see how they interact with each other. Yeah. And yeah, and learn to grow. I mean, you've seen um, My Hero Academia, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that that's like a poor man's version of Naruto. Okay, I see. I like uh, I like that. I like it a lot. I've been watching. Yeah, uh, I've actually I, been, I bought the first manga just when they came out, but I couldn't keep up. It was coming out so fast. Yeah, I would say everything you like about My Hero Academia, they stole from Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like that type of uh, when you look at it. It's my brother. He says it kind of everything kind of goes back to Dragon Ball, right? It's about, yeah. like they yeah. all like face off. Like characters get stronger and stronger. Right, and they get and there's like. Dude, uh, yeah. Have you seen My Hero Academia? Like the, uh, I don't know how far have you seen into. The um, I, I was, I was, uh, I'm probably up to episode. I'm oh, sorry, season three. I think I've seen everything up to season three when they were fighting the uh, the gang um, with um, what's his name? Uh, 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 the 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 guy who could uh, face through walls. Remember, oh, remember. Remember him? Uh, remember uh, uh, Sir? Uh, what's his name? Sir something or other, who could pre sort of predict the future. Oh yeah, 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 
Yeah, I, was, I saw. I'm up to that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm up to that point where where Naruto saves that little girl. Not Naruto. Where <laughs> where where, <laughs> where um da, 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 Deka da, 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 Yeah, Deku. De, Deku. Where Deku yeah, saves Deku. that little girl from from the mob. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I, I I've seen up to that point. Okay. I, I think there's a new season after that, which I have not watched. Yeah, it's, it's man. I, I got into it, and uh, I kind of like got into maybe not as much as, uh, but I did get into um, Jujutsu Kaisen. Mm. Uh, at first, I didn't know if I would, uh-huh. but I started getting into it because I kind of like uh, the characters are colorful, but also kind of interested me like the way they their story, um, the world, the way they had the rules, you know, the set, the the characters is so weird. But I'm like, it's, I think kind of. It's a lot of supernatural stuff, so I'm wondering how much of it is just, they just create some totally weird stuff, or how much of it is based off of like you were talking about, like myths or lore and stuff like that. Mm. And um, so I kind of just watch and kind of get an idea why do people like this? Uh-huh. And it has great animation fight scenes and stuff. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's a, that's the main re- when you mentioned it on your on your um, drawing live stream. That's a, that's the main reason why. I looked into it because you said that they, they had really cool fight scenes and stuff. And I like fighting anime. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I was like, oh, I'll check it out. And it, it, it's good. I, I enjoy it. Yeah, they did some crazy. There's one, if you get to an episode where they have um, this character that the main character fights, he's like part of his team, kind of like they go to this like school. You know? Right. And uh, this guy looks like a grown man, though. He's like, he looks like someone from, he'd be like from. Oh, the he's guy with the dark him. hair. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like crazy. He, he like beat up his uh, his his classmate, the guy with the shaggy hair. Yeah, like, yeah. He's like almost kills people. He's just like so yeah, brutal. He's, he's, he's a psychopath. Yeah. But have you gotten up to where he actually he's like befriended the main? No, character? I haven't seen that episode yet. No. Oh, okay. That's insane. It's like that guy is like a guy you hate, but then all of a sudden he starts becoming like you see and where he's coming from, like his background and right. There's the fight scene with him. Uh huh. And the main character, and when they, you'll see when they face off against uh-huh. uh, an enemy, it's insane. It's like, yeah, the the level of animation, like there's always you tell there's different animation teams, uh-huh. like you know, like they handle different elements of stories. Like there's yeah. a team that does the uh, funny um, comedy and then the mm-hmm. drama, and then there's a team that does the action fight scenes. That the animation style yeah. changes just a little bit. Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's so cool. Yeah, I mean, when, when if if you ever get around to watching Naruto, it, you'll you'll notice that with with that show too. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. There'll be some episodes where like the episode is like just gonna be primarily like a like a like a major fight scene, and the animation level just like you could tell this is a different company <laughs> doing <laughs> doing the animation for this because the stuff. I mean, just just the blurs, you know, the the various things that are happening are just like five mm-hmm. times a higher a high, higher level than than the usual stuff they show on that show. So, it, and it, and it's it's amazing, amazing to watch. <laughs> that is awesome. Hey, yeah. uh, was it uh, someone said Vic uh, said Gantz Zero is okay? Yeah, dude, Gantz. Have you ever seen Gantz or anything? Read anything about Gantz? Yeah, no, I I, I saw the uh, I'm trying. To, I saw the uh, CG I saw, movie they did. I, I think I saw all the live action movies, um, and uh, I think first, I saw most of the anime. The first live action movie is really good. Mm-hmm. I didn't. The second one I didn't really watch because um, it did totally nothing to do with the comic. Um, but uh, the the series, the, the manga series, uh-huh. it's one that I don't recommend because it gets kind of raunchy in uh, oh, really? different okay. places. Mm-hmm. Right. I never read um, the manga. I just. Uh... I just yeah, I, I was like looking through it online, and I was just kind of like, but the it just goes, it gets crazy into like, as crazy as it is, it gets even crazier in the storyline as you get mm. towards the end. Mm-hmm. And um, but the the live action, not the live action, the CG movie they uh, did on Netflix, it sticks really close to the uh, comic. Oh, and it's like probably the, the it's like basically it takes place in the middle of the story. And they just animated a movie from the middle of the story, and it is like crazy. It's just, mm. it's insane. It's like the animation's really good, but the fighting and everything, it's yeah, it's creepy, you know, because they they fight basically fight like demons, right? Um, yeah, 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 yeah they're, they're they're demons. 
but then I, I assume there are aliens or I mean, they're, they're, it, it gets really weird though like uh yeah it's just weird they at one point they're actually i don't know if i should give it away but it's it's like a long read though it's like i kind of skimmed through stuff when it got yeah. weird like yeah. you know but I, I just wanted to see the cool fight scenes right yeah. but uh but yeah it's kind of like one of those almost type of like Gantz is kind of like that um mm -hmm. you know naruto you know dragon ball type thing where you face off against the characters get more dangerous and deadly and mm. it's just the stakes are higher and it's just like and, and the character the main character i like of Gantz. this uh -huh. is what i like about it he's like just kind of a lecherous type of like perverted selfish teenager right yeah. but through the story he becomes this very selfless heroic guy who just yeah. tries, sacrifices his life to save people and you're like it's just this great story transformation of character mm -hmm. but if not for all, I could, I'd recommend it to people, but it's just got so much raunchy stuff in it that it's like, yeah, I don't want like anybody to see it and be like, yeah, be forewarned. It's not, yeah, yeah, because but the story, the lessons you get from it, the character, yeah. the character is so good. It's so, so, so it's a rated R, rated R story. Yeah, if you watch the Gantz Zero movie on Netflix, uh -huh. um, that one is it's more palatable. Like they kind of like take out some of the, um, the stuff. Yeah, there's only one really bad. Thing I think in it, um, in the in the I mean in the uh, entire comic series. I mean there's more than that, but there's there's one character who's really perverted, and that's why I'm like, ugh. Mm -hmm. But uh, but no, he's in the actual movie, but they of course cut out, they okay. cut out the scene that's good. where he gets perverted. Yeah. But the action man is so so crazy, and um, I that's what I like about Japanese stuff. They just go all the way out to like just some weird storylines, concepts, and you're like, what are they doing? And that's kind of taught me like to kind of like not be afraid to do that in my stories like just to go all out and just uh -huh. like create something fun but also yeah. like it makes people go whoa because i wanted people to think i also want to like be able to give people some truth in it but it's got to be entertaining man and that's i think what i kind of learned from some of the japanese stuff is yeah just don't be afraid to create really wild out there stories mm. they entertain but of course you want some value to it right because I think they're only what, one to two percent Christian in Japan, the population. Say what? It's like only like one percent Christian. Where and what? In Japan. Oh, in Japan, really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it's really small. And then, uh, but Korea is like what, like forty, forty-five percent Christian or something like that. Really? Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Korea has a lot of Korea has a lot of Christians. Hmm. Um, they have one of the largest churches in the world um, in South Korea, Seoul, Korea. Okay. And uh, they have like. A couple hundred thousand members or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh. but no, there's a lot of actors because my brother's been getting into K K dramas, and I oh. actually been getting into it myself. There's some really good. Oh, if speaking of horror, action horror. Um, if you watch Netflix, check out if it's still on there. It should be on there. It's called Sweet Home. Sweet Home. Sweet Home. Oh okay. my gosh, that that's based. All these dramas or all these crazy shows are based off of web comics. They're webtoons. Uh huh korean webtoons and it's this one is crazy it takes place in an apartment complex it's basically like an apocalypse but it's like a monster apocalypse oh wow and um yeah it's it's the story is like wild and it's it's great it's it's, it's fun to watch it's, got, it's, uh -huh. it's like horror but then it turns into action horror so it's okay. not like mm -hmm. um, and it has blood in it i don't think it has a lot of Gore per se, I can't remember offhand. I know it has a lot of blood, right? Uh -huh. Huh. But it's if you're into like something like that, that's worth kind of checking out. And the, if you want something that's funny, uh -huh. that's about the life of a comic artist, check out um, the Korean drama Netflix is called. Um, oh, man, my mind's blanking out. Sound of your heart. Sound of your heart. S sounds of your heart. Yeah, sound of your heart. Okay. That one is make you like cry laughing. It's so like funny. Huh. The, the guy is so he's basically it's about this nerdy guy, Korean guy, who becomes a webtoon artist. But he's trying to draw, but he takes his strip like to editors and they just kind of laugh at him and go, Man, you're horrible at drawing. Aww. And so you gotta draw something with that's close to you and that has like some life in it. So he's like he goes through all the steps that you kind of go through the the pain of being an artist but then he just his family is so weird and it's based <laughs> off of like a real his real family and everything too so it's uh -huh. like 
autobiographical but embellished. So it's just right. fun. Huh. Netflix. Check it out. It's a sweet home. And uh, if you like horror, action horror, and then Sound of Your Heart, if you like comedy, it's. Mm. Let me give you a sound example of some of the comedy of that Sound of Your Heart. He mm-hmm. goes to a public bathroom. He's like, he's using his, you know, he has an iPad with him. And the guy next to the stall and the stall next to him asks, asks for some toilet paper. Uh huh. Because he ran out. Yeah. Well, he, uh, he goes to get some toilet paper for the guy, but he took his pants off because he didn't want to touch the ground. He put the pants on top of the toilet paper rack. When he reaches to get the toilet paper, his pants falls on the ground. The guy thinks he hands him pants. Ew. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. So the guy goes, thanks, buddy, and, like, Ew. leaves. So he's stuck there. God. He's stuck there with – no, this is what happens. He took his <laughs> – he stuck. He uses his underwear, boxer shorts, and so he has his pants, but that's all. He doesn't have any toilet paper himself, so he uses his <laughs> So he's got nothing now. And uh, – uh, so he's it's he's so dumb for like how he thinks he's trying to solve a problem, right? And so he's got to basically run without without his uh, uh pants. He's running <laughs> from the public bathroom, but he's covering his face with the iPod, right? Uh, I mean, not the iPod, but the iPad. <laughs> I don't recognize him. But then, but then the iPad screen comes on, and it's a picture of his face. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> stop. Oh, it's it's and then it's, it gets so ridiculous, but it's like that's the kind of humor. It's but the guy he pulls it off is I guess he's a really well known, famous uh, comedian actor mm-hmm. in Korea. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know it when I watched it. I thought, what is this? But now, I actually start following some shows that he's on. He's actually a pretty good actor too. Okay. Now, cool. I'm getting to know these people now by face. right. Yeah. It's it's like when you watch uh, British British television, BBC. Oh, you, yeah. you notice after watching a few shows, that's usually the same ten people in all these shows. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, what it's Korea. It's a small. It, uh, it's so weird. Country. It's like yeah, it's like like James like Dame Judy Dench is is in like every like you know fifth <laughs> TV show and yeah you know, that's been on the BBC. You know. Yeah. It's like if you watch enough BBC, it's like you you pretty much know like the ten people who who are the most you know well known actors in in England. <laughs> <laughs> What can you do though, man? That's all they got, right? Well, they got movies, they got plays, but but you they just I mean like the, the the actors. I mean, they have a small. Well, they, they have plays right? in England. They don't they don't need the same ten, but maybe, maybe they're just like they're so good that they just yeah. Uh, that's what I mean. They got the, the best. They want the best for their project, so they only got like yeah, a, yeah. So <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, the Korean. <laughs> my brother's Netflix cha- channel. Yeah, where uh-huh. he's Quay Quay when you upload his like profile. It's nothing but Korean shows. Oh, like really? The, it's just nothing. You think is a Korean version. It's just all Korean. I'm like, dude, every yeah. show they give him, and he's watched like almost every one. He's like, tells me which one's good, which one's not good. He got me to one called Let's Eat. Called what? Let's Eat. Let Beat, okay. No, Let's Eat. E-A-T. Oh, Let's Eat. Let's Eat. Yeah, Let's mm-hmm. Eat. And it's basically the main character has a food blog, and he like, but it's like a whole like comedy drama where he's living in an apartment and interacting with people. Mm. And, but they eat when they eat on the show. It's like five minutes straight of them just eating and enjoying oh. food. Wow! And they have the you know, music playing and, and it makes you hungry watching it. You're like, oh, I try <laughs> so we started eating like watching and trying Korean food now because we're watching and like I gotta try that. <laughs> so we're eating like ramen, kimchi, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's why we don't have Netflix because um, my wife is a. Uh, we, we we got the thirty day trial. Oh yeah. And uh, for that thirty days, my wife would like stay up like to like two o'clock <laughs> in the morning, watch, <laughs> watching uh, Korean romance dramas. Oh she, man. She, she got hooked on them. Yeah. And, and she it just like one, and they're never ending. I mean, they're like like <laughs> a million of them, and they go on forever. So you know, I was like, we can't get Netflix because you'll never go to bed. <laughs> you know, it's like you you're you, it's, it's you know it's like introducing her to crack and like, you know she's just like she won't so stop you're gonna be responsible. she cut her off what yeah you're gonna be responsible well, here's some alcohol we know you have a problem yeah. just don't drink okay uh-huh. and you're like, yeah. <laughs> seriously find her the next morning like uh-huh. still awake with like yeah. an empty bag of like a gallon of like popcorn yeah like but yeah it's it is good. Another one to watch if people do watch it and are here and they don't have a problem with binge watching. Uh, 
I don't want to contribute to your, your <laughs> problems, but uh, there's one called Matt. It's all Matt's fault. It's okay to not be okay. <laughs> That's a one that surprised me that I actually got hooked onto. That's the name of it. Yeah, it's okay not to be okay, and it's basically it's about a, a children's book author who's like a goth kind of like dark lady. She, she's really pretty. Uh -huh. She's dark, but she does children's books. Right. And she runs into a guy from her childhood who has a brother who's autistic, an older brother, and he kind of takes care of him, and he works in a mental institution. And and uh, his brother, who is his autism, is an artist, and he loves her children's books. And uh, it's just it's so good. It's 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 just like you, at first when I watch this, I'm like, why am I going to watch? My brother wanted me to see it. I'm like, why am I going to watch this dark, evil-looking mm -hmm. goth lady? Yeah. But it's not what you think. You start watching it, and it's like you get to like the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I, I was surprised, you know, because I've seen dramas like old dramas in the past, like where they were just like you know soap operas. But these are actually like mini movies every episode. So I can see why they're addictive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. Oh, I, I'm gonna make a run again to get my laundry out of the dryer, but okay. Um, are you going to be on for a little bit, or are you going to? Be well, um, I I can. I mean, it's been two hours, but you know, we, oh, you, it's we been two hours. We can talk some more if you want. Um, it's up to you. You want to hang out a little longer, or you want to you want to get going because you have stuff to do. Um, I can hang out for a little bit, maybe. Okay, um, we'll we'll, my, we'll we'll do it for like maybe another half hour, and then I'll let you go. Is that okay? Okay, that sounds cool. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go run and get my clothes then. Okay, sounds and good. I'll be right back. I will read the chat. P Money right. says. Hello everyone. I'm about to watch Black Widow with my wife. I hope it's worth the one, the over one year delay. Yeah, it is. Um, I saw it with my wife uh, yesterday and today, and it's it's a good movie. You'll enjoy it. It it is no Captain Marvel. <laughs> it's actually a good a good movie. Um, <laughs> Jeff Potts says next up Matt Cost and Skivvies. Hopefully not. <laughs> I'll try to show the goods. <laughs> I'll show the, I don't flash those things around, man. Is this that type of stream, Matt? Um, yeah, my heart, my heart shape, my the, the heart boxers, right? They have hearts all over them. Yeah. <laughs> the classic. Um, I'll, I'll spare you. <laughs> uh, Vic asks, uh, "Were you near that condominium when it fell in Miami?" Um, I don't know who he was asking me. Me? No, I'm I'm not. You know, I'm probably an hour north of um, of where that condo fell. Um, P. Mike says, well, wait, watching paint dry is better than Captain Marvel, so Black Widow has a low bar. Well, it, it, it's probably, what, what can I compare it to? What other Marvel movie can, can I compare it to? It's probably, it's not as good as uh, The Winter Soldier, but it's not too far off. It's, it's a pretty good movie. It's, um, yeah, I mean, I guess the only downside it has, to my mind, is it's probably, I, there might be a little too much humor in it little too much forced humor in it but when you watch it you, you probably won't really notice it you know it's a, it's a solid it's a solid film it's, it's worth the wait so and it's better i would say it's better than most marvel movies it's better than the spider-man movies it's better than it's better than thor ragnarok which i hated um it's probably better than all the thor movies um it's better than uh, Iron Man three. It's better than Iron Man two. It's a good movie. It's 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 a good Marvel movie. Is it in the top five? I don't know. Top five Marvel movies for me: Iron Man, Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Infinity War. I would say it's probably. It's probably as good as as Civil War. I say it's a Civil War, Civil War quality Marvel film, if that makes sense. <laughs> Pretty much says I will say it helps that I have that I was a crush. Oh, you had you have a crush on the two lead actresses, so win win. Yeah, no, you'll like it. It's it's and and, and both um, Scarlett and the other girl. I don't remember. I don't know her name. Or I don't remember her name. Uh, they're both really good in the, in the film. It's it's really good. Bump, 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 bump. 
John Diller says that Ninth Gate is one of my favorite movies, but The Gate is pretty good. I, I've never seen either of them, actually. Uh, Vic says, some of the animation reminds me of that Naruto clone piece where it's just too many characters and they are detailed, kind of looks bad. Looks kind of bad. Not sure which one he's talking about, but anyway. Anyway, I'm like I said, I'm working on this uh, page for uh, Secret Comics Presents, penciling it right now, trying to get it to look okay, trying to get the shadows to work and everything. So it's getting there. It's getting there. Shadow Clone Jitsu. I need a Shadow Clone Jitsu to get this book done. That way, three of us can work at the books at the same time. I can pencil pages, and then my and then my Shadow Clones can ink them. And then another Shadow Clone could tell Nasher to lay off and leave me alone so I can finish the book. Um, P. Mai says, okay, I'm sad. I first looked at the cleavage and, and said she's pretty good looking. I, I hadn't seen the face yet. Um, she's ain't the face yet. I'm a very sad human. Well, she, she's very pretty. She's, she's very cute. Look look at that beautiful face. A beautiful face. And and her, I guess this is a plastic surgeon. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, it's getting there. Trying to think of, hmm, I should probably just give him standard pants. I'm trying. I'm thinking about giving him just like shorts, but <laughs> I don't know. Huh? Maybe I should. Should I give him shorts with like a weird design on them? Nah, it's just. Hmm, I don't know. Let me think about it. Let me think about it. Uh, Mark Anthony says, I think the third Shadow Clone will be getting the shaft in that scenario. I'm probably having to deal with Nasser. Um, okay. I think this page is pretty much, pretty much done in terms of penciling. I'll, I'll I'll set it aside for now. Give it a think in terms of what I need to do with it. But let me let me start on page nineteen. Seven people are watching. Man, thank you everybody for hanging out with me and Matt and for keeping us company while we chat and draw. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to Matt Cosson on YouTube. It's just Matt Cosson, all one word, no space, M-A-T-T-C-O-S-S-I-N. Look him up on uh, in, the, in the search on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel. He, uh, he live streams himself drawing his comic book, Modded, M-O-D-D-E-D, -D -E -D, every Monday afternoon. So uh, just make sure to subscribe to his channel and make sure you hit the bell for notifications. Make sure the bell is set for all notifications when you subscribe to Matt's channel. And uh, yeah, then uh, YouTube will let you know next time Matt live streams. You can watch him working on his book. It's pretty cool. Um, PMI says, uh, page 19, I want you to get to 22 now. Um, well, actually, the, the, num the numbering I'm using is a little weird because there's a two-page sort of preview at the beginning of the book. So when I say page 19, it's really page 21. So this, the one I just drew, was page 22. This is page 22, I guess, officially. But in my mind, I, I see this page 20 because I tend to ignore page, the uh, the the preview the little you know prequel pages at the beginning of the book so you've already seen page 22 p money mark anthony's causing trouble 
saying, I thought this was Matt's show. Who are you again? I am Grace Jones. Biggest fan. That's who I am. Um, <laughs> excuses, excuses. Just get my comic done or I cry. I said, you sound just like Nasser, except Nasser usually says, excuses, excuses. Just get my comic done or I will kill you. So, so, so you know, so you're, not, you're, not, you're not as bad as Nasser, but usually I'm the one crying. But, you know. I'm getting it done. I'm getting it done. Working as working as fast as I can, folks. Let's see. Let me make sure I have the right. I have, you have to maintain continuity when you're drawing comic books, because otherwise, <laughs> people people like me notice. If I if I see something out of continuity with a comic book, then I was like, wait, that that was different on on the previous page. You've been on it for. Ah. Hey, I'm back. Uh, I'll say, I guess uh, my wife just came back with some food for us, so I guess I will be calling. The I'm sorry, tonight. what? Oh, my wife just came back with some food. Okay, I'll let you go. No problem. She got some curry, oh. chicken curry. Oh, awesome, awesome. I was just telling everybody to subscribe to your channel. And, oh, uh, thanks, man. Yeah, to make sure to us. Uh, to hit the hit the like button and to uh, hit the bell when they do, so that when you when you, because like I said, you uh, you live stream every Monday. Oh yeah, yep, Monday at twelve noon Pacific time, and yeah, Pacific Standard Time. So you just tune in uh, when you want to, uh, and I do a live stream uh, randomly sometimes on the weekends, Fridays, Saturdays, and um, okay. But uh, today I'm here with you, and oh, I'd like you. to have you on my stream too. So yeah, man, sure. Anytime. Figure out how do you stream yard? Yeah. No. Anytime. Just let me know. Um. Like like I said earlier, I'm I'm using I'm I'm extending the last ten minutes of my free stream yard account right now. Um. Oh, I, only, really? I only had ten minutes left when I started the stream two and a half hours ago. Whoa. And, but I found out that as long as you don't shut the stream down, you know, you're able to keep going. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. So. Uh, I, um. Do you have an actual account with them, or is yours free? Um, I don't have an account, so I don't know. I didn't know how it works. I've never used it before. I've only been uh, how do you, part of the streams. How, how, do, how do you stream then? What do you use, OBS? Um, I just use YouTube. <laughs> just use I have you a, yeah, I just use my uh, uh, laptop. Yeah, but um, don't, you need, don't you need some sort of program like StreamYards or something? I thought they, they ended the ability to just... Okay, no, maybe, maybe not. Okay. No, it's only if you use like your mobile device. You have to have a thousand subscribers to be able to stream mobily. But uh -huh. uh, if you use your computer, you can do it. You can live stream. Really? So yeah, you just go to YouTube. Just click in, uh, you know, where you upload videos or live stream, and you can do the live stream, set it up, and everything. Huh. So, okay, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna yeah. have to figure out how to do that because uh, I've been using Streamyard all this time, and I have a camera and everything set up. If I don't need, oh. I don't need Streamyards, and I'll I'll do that then. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. cool I learned man. something today. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But the awesome. only advantage is you could do uh, like me. You could do have. I don't know if you could do this type of thing. Have two people on one live stream, except. Just yeah, I don't either. I'll have to look into it. So. Um, yeah. But I have you on. I'll figure it out. We'll get you on mine too. And. Yeah. No. It sounds like fun. Cool. Yeah. All right. But, but thank you again, Matt, for for hanging out. And uh, for, uh, you know, just uh, sort of uh, letting us learn a little more about you. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It's fun, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm glad you had a good time. You know, oh, get good. some stuff done, too. You can mod it. And, yeah. Uh, Mark Anthony says, today was a good day. The boomer learned <laughs> something. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark Anthony. Yeah. I think you're yeah. talking to you, right, Jason? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, everybody. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel as well as Matt's. Hit the bell for notifications of future videos. Make sure it's set for all. If you haven't already, buy the book, Secret Comics Presents, that I'm working on right now. Uh, the link is in the uh, scrolling down below here at the bottom of your screen. Also, it's in the description, and also it's in the chat uh, pinned to the top up there. So, um, and I will see you guys on Monday um, with another live stream. Matt will have another live stream, and hopefully you will be able to watch both of us um, yeah. on Monday. Okay? And guys, you take care, and we'll talk to you later. All right? Bye. Later.